Assalamu alaikum friends, how are you all doing? Hope you all are good. Welcome to lecture 10 of SBL, that is the board of directors. This is again from section B, which is governance. Uh, before I start this lecture, uh, let me say something that's very important that all my students should know. Uh, that uh, I would like to apologize from the bottom of my heart for being so late for uploading uh, lecture 10. The day I uploaded lecture 9, I think it was around beginning of March. And after that, I didn't upload any video. There was such a big delay um, due to personal issues, of course. So for that, I'm really, really sorry that it took so much time. So this lecture 10 is the continuation from the lecture 9. And uh, all these lectures will be available in my playlist SBL lecture. And this is valid even for your exam, even for the ones who are planning to do exam after June. That is uh, September, if you are planning to take September 2022, this lectures will be valid for it. Reason, because there is no change in syllabus, okay? If you want to know why it is valid, go to your syllabus of from September 2022 onwards till 20, 2023. There is not much change in the syllabus of SBL, which is a very good news. So you can still rely on this lecture it's still going to be valid even for the people sitting for september or uh, december 2022 not just june okay uh, my i will be i'm planning to finish the whole sbl syllabus by for the june exam for the june session before that inshallah and uh, then we'll touch upon the questions from the past paper or division kit for sbl and uh, I hope that my voice is clear. I'm trying because uh, I have, I got cold and uh, I have this, my voice is a little broken. But uh, I hope you will be able to, uh, you can hear me properly. Okay. The reason is because uh, as you all know, the exams are coming. Okay. So that's why I thought of uh, continuing with the lecture. Okay, even with the bad health, so it's okay. Uh, now, let me introduce you to lecture 10. This lecture 10 is a very big lecture, let me tell you from before. Okay, it's a very lengthy lecture. Okay, if you go in your textbook, Kaplan textbook of SBL, this is a very lengthy chapter. Okay, I try to summarize the main points. 120 slides are there this lecture and this whole lecture will be in one part only one video okay the reason i don't make it in different parts is because it's very confusing later on okay which part is right which part is where sometimes it get lost okay uh, somewhere so better to put all in one lecture even though it's big okay it, it might exit to us this lecture okay um, but let me tell you from your exams point of view most at least 60 to 70 percent of the things are going to be covered from this lecture it's very important okay board of directors now when you go through this lecture how do you remember all those things take this as a manual when you are dealing with board of directors manual in a sense so what do you find in a manual when you purchase a iphone or anything how to use it right what are the things what if things go bad uh, how do you what if the battery goes down, things like this. So for this, is like a manual for the board of directors. How do you appoint them? When do you reject them? Uh, when do you uh, remove them, terminate them? How do you uh, pay them compensation? Okay, their remuneration policies. And then how do you appoint, how they should be, uh, how a board of directors are made up of the composition of it. Okay, how do they pay contribution towards governance, good corporate governance in the company? All those things we are going to cover under this chapter very important chapter okay you can put a triple star mark somewhere okay and this lectures will be available to you if if you want this lectures in a pd uh, pdf format please email me okay in my email sabiyakta0 at gmail.com and i will send you the pdf this thing the pdf version of this lecture okay so let's start on that note with lecture 10 and um, I'll be uploading lectures every day, okay? If not every day, uh, maybe a day after, but uh, lectures will be uploaded, okay? You have to stay tuned to my channel to get all the updates 
of my channel if you haven't subscribed my channel for the ones who have not subscribed please do subscribe so that you get the updates of my latest uh, video when i upload them okay the first nine lectures are already there on my playlist sbl lecture this is this will be added lecture 10 okay so the topic is board of directors what do you focus here you focus what are their roles and responsibilities okay what is diversity board structure non-executive director chairman and ceo directors induction and cpd cpd means continuing performance development legal and regulatory framework regarding board of directors everything in a company okay has some regulatory or legal framework to it okay same for board of directors then we have board committees the four board committees out of it one is nomination committee then we have development of corporate governance regarding director's remuneration director's remuneration is a very important topic under this the whole topic okay <coughs> and by the way this chapter in your textbook is uh, it is named as the same board of directors okay i think it's chapter chapter 11 it should be chapter 11 in your textbook or chapter 12 11 or 12 one of it remuneration committee is another one from the board committee there are four committees nomination remuneration risk and audit committee we are going to cover nomination remuneration okay then director's remuneration then other issues when you set that director's remuneration and non-executive director's remuneration okay these are the 14 areas we are going to cover and at the end of this video i'm going to summarize all these 14 areas so that you get like you don't forget things okay we can summarize everything in totality you have to know now before i start let me ask you this question why board of directors is so important why we are studying this as a whole uh, separate cha chapter there are so many topics like employees are there staff are there customer why board of director see your subject is strategic business leader you have to think from the point of a business when you set up a business your own business board of directors is very important you are the shareholder you need a board of director to run the company why board of directors is very important compared to other stakeholder and why there's a separate chapter on this is because board of director plays a major role in the structure of the company they are the one who run the company not the shareholder shareholder they just have ownership the the one who runs is board of director if things go wrong if board of director they fail in their responsibility company collapse things go wrong everyone suffers in the economy they are so very significant their roles are very significant very important they are the one who set the strategy that's why this they are very important okay board of director is also one of the stakeholders out of all the stakeholders but this is the most important whichever the stakeholder is the most important which plays an important role in corporate governance we have a separate chapter for that separate lecture on that one is board of director okay so now you have a clear understanding of why we are studying this board of directors first of all okay? everything relating to board of directors only we are going to cover how they are appointed how they are going to be terminated what are their roles what are their remuneration okay <coughs> now let's start with the roles and responsibilities okay a director who is a director before we start you should know who is a director he is the one okay the affairs of the company rest on his hand the director he can be anyone he's an office of a company basically he takes care of everything okay director one director single director is a part of a board of directors board of directors means it is made up of many individual directors right so one single director is just an officer of that company okay they have the responsibility to manage the company that is the meaning of director collectively when you put all the directors together they are known as board of directors okay and who appoints this board of director someone has to appoint them shareholder it is the shareholder who appoints them why because shareholder we know the principal agent relationship the theory right shareholder cannot run the company they they own they have a control but they don't run they need someone else to do they are the principal they want an agent to run the company on behalf of them so this board of directors are the agent for the shareholder they appoint so shareholders appoint chairman of the board and all the other directors chairman is above above all the other directors remember that the hierarchy system 
share shareholders the first then the chairman then the board of directors okay so he appoints shareholder appoints the chairman and all the other directors okay and who recommends who takes care of this appointment like you appoint this you appoint that this one as a board of director this one comes as a chairman who does this who does this decision making it is done under nomination committee we are going to study this a little bit later in the lecture no about nomination committee they are the one who who recommends to appoint that is their job nomination committee they recommend and based on their recommendation shareholder appoints okay and so whether director as an individual director or a group of directors together they have a duty towards corporate governance okay this is the main theme of the lecture now let us start so board of director we are going to cover their roles and responsibilities how they are made up of the board composition okay they appoint ceo the chief executive officer okay and the company strategy they are the one who are going to follow this company strategy they allocate resources they take care of the internal control they govern the company and they are account to the public they are accountable to the public okay what are the key roles and responsibilities of a director you need to know this by the way okay when you are answering your exam question don't think that specifically they will ask like this it's not just you purely pick up from the textbook and write or from my lecture and write this as it is no you have to link this with your case given to you scenario you don't have to list all of this responsibility maybe few of it but you have to know them to know a few of it you should know at least some okay and my advice to this my dear students please do not memorize this points it will not help you at all understand go over and over again to have a better understanding of it once you understand the main concept you'll be able to write it okay so directors are the one who have the entrepreneurial leadership okay they are the one who leads the company okay they provide leadership one responsibility second they represent the company view and they account to the public they are the one who are accountable to the public they have to answer to the public the role of directors okay how the company looks like what is the overall view of the company they are the one who are going to represent it is their responsibility the directors third formal schedule if anything has to be decided will be done by the director okay if anything needs to be reserved for the board decision like board is the one who is going to take a decision this will be this is the responsibility of the director they determine the company's mission and purpose who sets up the who decides on the company's mission and purpose that mission statement that these things you see vision mission statement done by the director okay see all the strategic decisions the top level decisions right strategic is done by the director okay that is the simplest for you to understand then they select and appoint ceo see below chairman is a ceo okay directors they can they select ceo chairman and other board members the board of directors the directors okay they set the company's value and standard all the top level decision you see leading the company setting strategy setting values setting mission statements setting formal all are done by the directors only okay the the lower level things will not be done by the director they will be done by the lower employee the middle management or the lower level staff and all okay director has to ensure that management are performing their job correctly okay obviously it is management who is working behind the scene but it is the director's responsibility that they make sure that they are performing their job correctly okay and establish internal control so that you can assess the risk you have to establish as a director you have to establish that internal control in the company so that risks are minimized there some more to it okay there some more this is one list in the previous slide in addition to this there are more responsibilities ensure that necessary financial and human resources are in place see whenever you set an objective you need resources right whether financial whether human you need staff you need the money so you have to ensure that they are on the place the director's responsibility is that ensure the obligations are met okay 
to whoever there are obligations for example you have to pay a loan to the your debt holders make sure it is paid the, the, the this thing is met the conditions are met director have to ensure that they have to meet regularly it's not that once a year they meet okay no they have to meet regularly to see that their duties are being divided equally or divided uh, effectively okay everyone gets some duty to perform you have to assess okay they have to assess their own performance director who is going to assess their performance the directors at the top level they will see how the manager is performing employees are middle level senior level lower level managers are performing but what about the board of directors who see their performance they themselves only have to assess their own performance and they have to report it to the shareholder annually because they are appointed by shareholder they have to okay it's it's not a voluntary thing it's compulsory and submit yourself that means the director imagine you are the director you have to submit yourself a re-election you cannot be the same director without the re-election for 10 15 years you have to submit for re-election at regular intervals okay it could be okay there are some times time uh, set for it maybe after every three years or after every year after every two years like that okay all directors in FTSE 350 companies okay they have to put themselves for re-election every year it's a rule for FTSE 350 if you are not FTSE 350 then whatever the intervals it could be up to every three years or five years like that but FTSE 350 companies have to re-elect themselves every three years what are this FTSE uh, 350 companies you can google and check out okay very big companies like very very big companies roles and response of directors are to see directors have responsibilities towards certain stakeholders especially obviously it's for everyone but these are very important ones one for listed companies second okay listed companies they appoint appropriate non-executive director okay for listed companies you have to appoint non-executive director okay what is non-executive director non-executive director okay is someone we are going to cover this non-executive director in detail but just summarize it that uh, for a brief understanding that it is someone who does not uh, have the normal duty like how other directors have executive directors have. they are just on the supervisory role they supervise how executive directors are performing the one who are actually managing and running the company they don't have any function on day-to-day -day things okay they just they are there to supervise and see and report to the shareholder how executive directors are performing that's their role okay and for listed company you must appoint non-executive director but for small companies it's a choice you appoint you you don't appoint because non-executive directors are expensive their remunerations are pretty expensive that's why small companies they don't prefer appointing them but listed companies yes you have to establish remuneration committee for listed companies there should be a remuneration committee the one who gives the remuneration packages and all right your salary bonus benefits in kind those stuff a separate committee is there nomination committee has to be there nomination committee as i told you in the beginning of the lecture is the one who gives recommendation to the shareholder whom to appoint they are basically like the hr hrd department they appoint okay <coughs> they give a recommendation on whom to appoint whom not to appoint Establish audit committee. Okay. One more committee is there, risk committee, which we are not going to cover in this lecture. When we are going to cover risk, internal control, there we are going to cover that committee. But there are four committees total: audit committee, nomination committee, remuneration committee, and risk committee. Okay. So audit committee also has to be there. This is a must. Okay. Now. The, what are the what are some of the features of an effective board how do you say a board is effective or ineffective you have to know this because you are going to get a question on this you have to know the capabilities of an effective board if you don't know this then you will not be able to say whether it's effective or ineffective okay let's see effective obviously ineffective will be the opposite of effective right so we are not going to go through the double list effective means 
they will be having clear strategy okay whatever their capabilities is their strategy is clearly aligned to that if it is there that means this board is effective strategy is clear second they implement the strategy okay they do not delay too long for the strategy to happen they implement it as soon as they they start planning they implement that means board effect board is effective third key performance drivers monitored whatever they are whatever drives their performance it's monitored okay sharp focus on the views of city and other key stakeholders okay they focus sharply on other key stakeholders regular evaluation of the board performance the board performance is regularly evaluated okay then tone at the top as i told you board of directors imagine they are sitting on the top of the organization okay so they can see everything what is there okay they are like the head of the organization if they are not there then everything else below suffers okay so it is basically like a uh, organization has a environment they create environment through their leadership okay for example you might say this organization is ethical or this organization is unethical how do you say that based on what based on what the employees at the lower level do or depending on their culture from the top that's coming from the top right how the board of directors are whether they are ethical or not so it's like that that's why tone at the top is very important okay okay manager's tone this has a trickle down effect on employees how see if in any organization if top managers are they uphold their ethics they uphold to their values okay they are integral towards all their employees automatically this same culture will be followed down but if it's the other way around you are unethical you are accepting bribes you are giving bribes then you are in the corruption in the top level i'm talking about automatically the lower level will uh, the people at the down okay they will assume no this is a norm this is okay to practice because our seniors are doing it so it's okay we also can do it and get ahead with it so it they follow it right so that's the thing that's why this management tone is very important you set the tone at the top correctly things below will automatically follow on everything will be right you don't have to work on the bottom you have to work on the top because it comes from top to bottom not bottom to top whenever culture is there top level people they perform the they 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 let's say they are ethical they are practicing ethical values and all automatically it will come down okay what are the problems for the boards what are the potential problems for the boards number one <coughs> they largely rely on management to report information see these boards no matter whatever the power they are given okay they are the top they take the strategy but they cannot decide or they cannot take any action until they get a report from the management they have to get a report from their managers below them until they don't get the information they cannot rely and true they are the board of directors but it does not mean that they have all the time and all the skills to understand the details in the company's report they will only see the some main they will not read the entire report maybe the main a few key points or key details they will go through they will not have the time okay so because of that also the decision that they are going to make is limp will not be so effective okay second if a board is not meeting frequently they will be very unfamiliar with each other so in this case it's very difficult to question the board board members or oh, sorry the board members it will be very difficult for them to question the management why are board members why they are a board of directors so that they can question the manager otherwise manager will do according to their wish whatever they want principal agent theory remember in the previous lecture that's why board of directors is set up so that they can have a control over the manager they are basically the right hand man of the shareholder this board of directors so if they are unfamiliar with each other if they are not cooperating with each other it will be very difficult for them to question the management third 
CEOs. See, CEOs have this forceful personalities that they have to look like this. They are the CEO, they are the top level, they have to behave like this. They should have the influence over the others on the rest of the board. They have this thing. Because of this, also it becomes a problem for board of directors to perform their responsibilities. Okay. And next, the current CEO's performance is judged by the same director who appointed him. Who appoints CEO? Some of the directors from the board of directors. So if he is the same director who is judging their performance also, who have appointed the CEO, then uh, his or her evaluation might be unbiased. It's very difficult for him to be unbiased. He could be very biased. Why? Because he have this thing that I have appointed him. So definitely, you know, he has to have this a uh, say that since I have appointed, he's a good person. So his performance has to be good. No one wants to show uh, this performance of the CEO as bad, if especially if you are the one who have appointed him or her. So all this is creating problem for the board. Now we are coming to the second topic. So we are done with the roles and responsibilities. The first topic out of the 14. What is diversity? Second, you must have heard this diversity, diversity, di diversity several times. But what it means in strategic business leader? See, diversity means <coughs> variation. There are so many variations in a group. Not You're not sticking to one. Okay? There could be so many differences that exist between people. Some might be visible, some might be non-visible. Okay? That is the simplest definition of diversity. Okay? So this concept is very important when it comes to board of directors also. Okay? Concept of diversity means you are accepting the difference. You are accepting the difference and you are respecting the difference. You are understanding that every individual is unique. They have their unique taste. They come with their unique background, your unique culture. But at the end, you need to work along with them. Okay. And these differences could be uh, along any dimensions. Okay. These are the dimensions. Race, it could be based on race. Maybe your race is different or your ethnicity or your gender, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, your age, your physical ability, religious beliefs. So diversity could be in any form or political beliefs. Okay. It could be in any one of this that you are different. Diversifying the board have some advantages. And some drawbacks also. Let us go through the benefits. Very important. You should know the benefits and drawbacks. Okay. Benefits are more effective decision making. See when you are having in a group. Let's say you are having a group for a project. The many different types of people you have from different different uh, skills. Maybe they have different different skills. Some are good in researching. Some are good in writing the reports. Some are good in speaking. Some are good in field work. What do you think? What will be the end result? You will come up with a better project. Same for the business. Your decision making will be more effective because you are having people from different backgrounds with different experiences rather than everyone in one field. Second, you can utilize that pool better. Everyone is talented in different ways. Utilize it. Bring out their talent together. Different talents because one person cannot be talented in all the field. You have to accept it no matter what. Some might be good in finance, some might be good in math, some might be good in English. So it's like that. Then <coughs> third benefit. Enhancements of corporate reputation. It enhances your reputation also as a corporate citizen. How? That you are accepting people from different backgrounds. You as an organization, you are into diversity. You are accepting differences. It gives you a good reputation overall. It shows that you are a responsible corporate citizen who takes care of everyone's needs. And who understands everyone is unit. Then you can refer to the technical article on your ACC website for this. Okay. The name of the title is Diversifying the Board, a step towards better governance. It is updated version of uh, from 14th, 1st of Jan, 14th of Jan 2014. Okay, it's updated. Please go and read it. Women on the board. We are talking about the diversity. We told diversity could be. In terms of gender also, men, men should be on the board or women should be on the board or should it be equal? How? Let us go through this because we always talk about this very frequently when it comes to board of directors. Women or men, who has to dominate, who has, who can run the board better. 
okay so in uk they have done a research okay in 2010 they say that women made only 12.5 percent of the vote of food say 100 companies but when it uh, compared to 2004 whereas it was only 9.4 percent so you saw that it increased from 9.4 to 12.5 okay over the six years but if you see the increase it's not too much the rate of increase is very slow it increased but rate is slow okay then let us go in detail about women in general how they are okay their characteristics see when they're at university okay they're very successful okay women are successful at university and in their early careers okay because most of the women if you see they are highly educated now everyone is at university getting degrees some other degrees they are into the job not like before when they were not allowed to do job now they're very successful okay but their rate attrition rate increase as they okay but attrition rate increase as they progress through an organization what does it mean that means they can easily switch their job from here to there here to there since they are very uh, now they are successing okay and they are progressing to an organization they are reaching the top level they can easily change from one job to another they don't stick to one place that is also there when women are so underrepresented on corporate boards companies are missing out see when you think overall when women they are so successful okay they are good in multitasking compared to men okay obviously men will not agree to my point uh, but yeah that's most of the women they are good so if you are missing out on this talent of the women on the board if you are not having them they are underrepresented what it means company is missing out so if company is missing out what is the disadvantage from the point of the company they are unable to draw from the widest possible range of talent see there are some talent okay which is which women possess okay some it is men okay you can have a board 100% men okay but what about the women on the board they have their talent which men does not have so you are not utilizing the talent of the women on the board then understanding what it means so that's the thing and according to evidence okay they have done some researches and all to see whether women are more successful or men are more successful evidence suggests that companies with strong female representation at the top level management they perform better than those without and that gender diverse boards have okay rather than just having men if there are women also on the board they perform better than just the board with the men that's what evidence suggests so now you can see advantages of diversity diversity of non executive directors okay now according to the hicks review they found majority of neds in uk companies are white okay majority they are white middle aged males of british origin with some previous plc director experience okay and in the survey that they have done what is the percentage of nd positions for non british nationals only 7% only 7% but while british citizens from ethnic minority only accounted for 1% like they are british accent but they have an ethnic minority they are the minority background from the ethnic point of view they are only one person so you can see the differences and also the survey found that although 30% of managers in uk corporate are female okay 30% but women only hold 6% of ned position in the manager level yes women are 30% but when it comes to ned position only 6% women are there you don't have to memorize this figures not this is just a survey to you to understand the concept better action so how do you increase this board diversity what do you do already they have done things let's see let's go through this projects that has been done you don't have to go through this projects it's not important for your syllabus means in the exam they will not ask you this figures and this things but let's understand when lord davies and his steering group they started this ambitious agenda in 2011 back then 2011 women was just 
in FTSE 100 boards. Okay. After a few years, this 12.5 percent had doubled and it became 26.1 percent in 100 FTSE 100 and 19.6 in FTSE 250. So you can see how board diversity is actually it is increasing because now more and more women are making up the board. Okay. When it comes to FTSE 350. See, there are three. One is FTSE 100, one is FTSE 250, one is FTSE 350. Go to Google and check out what is this FTSE 100 company, FTSE 250 and FTSE 350. You need to have an understanding of this. You don't have to know all the companies under that. Not all the 100 companies are 250 or 350. But at least those are one or two is enough. When it comes to FTSE 350, only 11 male boards are there. 11 all male. That means all are male. There, there are 15 boards. And the progress to get women on that board is very slow in the executive director's role. Now, so we are done with diversity. Let us come to the third topic, board structure, how the board is structured. Board can be structured in two ways. Okay, you need to know this. This can be asked. Okay, unitary and two-tire dual. Your board could be a unitary board or a two-tire board. What is unitary board? Single board. From the word itself, you know, it's a single board. Two-tire means there will be two levels, two boards. And in a single board, we have executive and non-executive director. And two-tire board, we have management board, which is known as lower tire. And we have a supervisory board, upper tire. When you come to single board and two board, you can see there are similarities. Executive director is management board. NED is a supervisory board. Similar, they are similar. But they have two tires, whereas in the single board, executive director and non-executive director, they come together. They are in a single board. That's the only difference. Otherwise, most of it are similar. Okay. Let us go to the two-tire board. First. Okay. This two-tire board, okay, they are uh, mainly associated in companies like France and Germany. France and Germany have this two-tire board. Let's use Germany as an example, okay? Why do they exist also? One, core determination. First bullet point, core determination. What does it mean? <coughs> it means the right for workers to be informed and involved in the decision that affects them. Okay, in Germany, they say that worker have the right to be informed and they have to get involved in the decision. So they are the manager and the supervisor, two level. And relation, second is relationship. What is the relationship in Germany? Banks in Germany, they have a closer relationship, okay? Than in UK, okay? With their companies. They are frequently shareholders. Banks could be the shareholders also of the company. In Germany, it is seen more than UK, okay? And other shareholders, they often deposit their shares and rights associated with their banks. You see? So, you need to have a supervisory board. You need to have a management board for this. In the U Germany, I'm talking about. Because of these two reasons, code elimination and relationship. It is not seen in UK much. Maybe it is in UK, but not seen much. That's why in UK, we have a unitary board. Same, non-executive and executive, that normal. Now, in two tire, let us go to the lower tire, that is the manager, the one who are operating the board. Manager, you know, operating they are responsible for day-to-day -day running of the enterprise okay and generally this board only includes executive non-executive directors does not come in this board and the ceo they coordinate activities coming to the upper tire supervisory board as you know they appoint they supervise they advise members of the management board okay strategic oversight they are the one who sets it that in includes employee representative. Maybe a representative from an employee could be in the supervisory board. Environmental group can be there or stakeholder management representative could be there. Anyone from any group of the stakeholder could be there in the supervisory board. Okay. But this NADs are not considered to be independent NADs. Remember, they are not independent. Like how we have seen in the unitary board. The chairman coordinates the work. Chairman is in the supervisory role. Members are elected by the shareholder at the AGM, that is annual general meeting. 
for the for the supervisory board and they receive information and they report from the management board okay who do they receive report from information from management board and they report back also to the management board supervisory okay they have to get this report from the management board otherwise supervisory board will not be able to know whether management board is effective or not now advantages what are the advantages of two-tier board think what could be clear separation between those that manage the company and those that own it or control for the benefit of shareholders clearly two tire board are separated one is managing one is controlling then the one who controls it so the supervisory board they can clearly see whether it is benefiting the shareholder or not so it's for the benefit of shareholder because separation is very clear the one who is overseeing the one who is managing they are not together otherwise the one who is overseeing or the one who is supervising could be biased no because they are also together in the same board like in the unitary board so in the two tire board this is an advantage second advantage is implicit shareholder involvement in most cases since the structures are used in countries where insider control is prevalent that means they believe better to have someone inside to control shareholders are also involved like how you have seen in germany the banks they have a close relationship with the company so they also they are also getting involved in the decision making third stakeholders are wide because you're using rep worker representation like you have used uh, because in the supervisory board there could be employee representation there could be uh, from the environmental group representation it could be from anyone so stakeholder is wide independence of thought discussion and decision since board meetings and operations are separate independent is there why board meetings are separate operations are separate supervisory are in the supervisory only operations are all the operations only direct power over management directly supervisory can have a power over the management why because they are the one who can appoint the management board they are the one they appoint the members of the management board who are the supervisory board but but every advantage comes with some drawbacks there are some drawbacks also to it problem is number one dilution of power your power is diluted no one actually has the power who has the control over whom there's a confusion over who is having the authority so there is a lack of accountability also you are accountable to whom why because there are right for many different stakeholders all the stakeholders if they get involved in decision decision making becomes very problem it's very problematic second isolation of supervisory board see your supervisory board is isolated they don't participate in the management meetings so because they don't participate in the management meeting they don't know how management meetings are managements can easily manipulate them with whatever reports they give or information supervisory board only has to trust the management uh, report that's it because they don't have any idea they don't participate so it's a disadvantage second agency problem agency problem between the boards the two boards supervisory upper and second why where one will be acting on behalf of another if the management board excludes the supervisory board there's a confusion over authority who is having authority over whom then bureaucracy is increased because bureaucracy is increased decision making will always be slower and lack of transparency over what who appoints the supervisory board there's a it's not very transparent so because of that monitoring becomes inefficient and your governance suffers now let us go to the advantages of unitary board so we are over with two tire board let us go to the unitary board unitary board is a single board executive non-executive normal that we have been studying in uk till now okay so basically the issues that are there relate to the role of non-executive directors mostly number one advantages okay most of the advantages if you see are related to the role of non-executive directors only that's why i have mentioned it in the beginning only non-executive data expertise because i told you that uh, <coughs> non-executive director executive director on the same board okay 
so now they are also involved in running the company they okay their role is to supervise but they are also involved somewhere or the other they are involved in running the company also they are attending the same meeting as executive director so they are involved so their expertise can help second empowerment nad empowerment they are responsible as the executive you cannot say it's just the executive who are responsible no even non executive directors are held responsible okay and this can be better demonstrated by their active involvement at an early stage if they are early involved it can be issues can be solved earlier compromise less extreme decisions developed prior to the need for supervisory approval see extreme decisions are not being taken which which could be very harmful why because already nads are involved you are getting the supervisory approval executive directors when they are taking a decision they are getting the approval of non executive directors so chances are that extreme decisions will not be taken so much responsibility a cabinet decision making unit with wide view points such as better decision that means if you are having non executive director and executive director together in one board their view points are different and is very varied because of that responsibility will be they can make better decisions then fraud is reduced malpractice is reduced because wider involvement is there of the actual management of the company who is who are actually running the company are involved in the decision making because of this fraud will reduce it's not like in the two tier where they are separated supervisor is in the top the one this is in the lower level no improve investor confidence all of the above what happens at the end investor confidence is improved in the company now so we are over with board structure also we are coming to the fifth topic non executive director fourth or fifth, i think it's the fourth topic non executive director these are the four roles of <coughs> non executive director that you need to know okay number 1 strategy role they play a role in strategy whenever there is a development they contribute to it second they scrutinize the role of the manager okay third people role they decide on the remuneration remember in the remuneration committee non executive director is 100% so they decide on the remuneration okay they decide on appropriate succession planning that means if chairman or the ceo retires who is going to take place of them who is going to be the replacement of them all these decisions are done by non executive director risk role the fourth one they control okay risk manage risk okay so now to be effective okay to be effective nad needs to do what number 1 build a recognition by executive in your okay in front of the executive you should have uh, this they should respect your opinion they should feel that you are open you promote openness and they can actually have a trust on you you should show them through your contribution you have to be recognized by the executive as someone who contributes then you are known as an effective non executive director second you have to be very well informed about the company if you are a non executive director you have to be very well informed about the company and also the external environment because you are supervising how are you going to supervise if you don't know what are the rules on the regulations of the sector if you don't know what the company is about you have to know all this have a strong command of issues you have to you have to have a strong command your voice has to be heard by the board you have to insist when you are having induction every company has induction you have to insist that that induction is comprehensive it's very formal and is very tailored to your needs and also they have cpd continuing performance development so they are your knowledge and skills are updated and information has to be given sufficiently to you in advance of the meeting okay so that you can go through that a thorough consideration has been given to the issues or not more to that okay effective 
you have to insist that information that you are receiving is sufficient, it is accurate, it is clear, and it is timely. Uphold the highest ethical standard. You, as a non-executive director, you are supposed to uphold that ethical standard up to the highest level. Obviously, it, executive director also has to do, but non-executive director has that responsibility even more because they are the one who are supervising the executive director. You have to question. You just cannot accept everything that is said to you in the board. You have to question inten uh, intentionally. Uh, then you have to debate constructively. You have to challenge and you have to decide this passion. Okay. Promote the highest standards of corporate governance. Okay. And seek compliance with the provisions of combined code wherever possible. Coming to independence. Whenever non-executive director is talked about, independence automatically comes to it. This term automatically is attached to it. Because they have to be independent. What does independence mean? The board should consist of half independent non-executive director excluding the chair. Forget about the chairman. Apart from the chair, in the board, okay, see a board has executive director also, non-executive director also. But half of the board should be of non-executive director and there should be independent non-executive director. That means half executive, half non-executive, okay. 50%, 50%, that's how the board is made. Excluding the chair, we're not talking about the chair yet. Next. Primary fiduciary duty that NED owns is to the company shareholder. NED owes duty to whom? Primarily to their company shareholder. Okay, they have, they have a fiduciary duty. Fiduciary duty means they have a duty of trust and care. Okay, they cannot be they cannot allow themselves to be influenced by the executive director or other members on the board. Next, recruiting those with previous in, uh, industry involvement can result in higher technical knowledge. How do you make sure that they're independent? Okay, that's how these are some points. Okay, the third say third point says when you are recruiting a non-executive director who already has the previous industry involvement is better. Why? Because it can result in higher technical knowledge. Your technical knowledge will be very high. You will have some network of contacts and you will be aware of also of the strategic issues. Okay. It's true, it can benefit. Okay, it can help. Uh, in the NED's contribution, these things, but they will be less independent in that case. Why? Because if you are having a prior industry involvement, right, your ability to be objective reduces. Why? Because you will be holding those previously held views. You will be you will be bringing those views along with you as you come to the new industry. What you have faced previously. It's like previous bad experience if you have, you'll be carrying it forward and you're assuming it here also, it will be the same. So you are biased. You are not independent in that way. Reasons why non-executive director has to be independent. Number one, so that you can give an objective view. You're detached from the board and you can give an objective view because remember your duty is to supervise, you are monitoring. So you have to be detached from the board to make a decision. Second, to provide expertise and communicate effectively okay to provide shareholders with an independent voice if you are independent then only you can give shareholders the independent voice and if you are independent means automatically confidence in corporate governance goes up and whatever self accusation is there whether that you might have some self-interest some motive will be there will reduce if you are independent the executive cannot question you or they cannot question your behavior saying that you have this motive that motive right your opinion is incorrect because you are not independent no for independent no one questions you but there are threats to independence how there are threats to independence for auditor same for non-executive director there are threats Okay, how? Number one, these are some threats to independence. These things should not be there. Okay, remember <coughs> material business relationships with company last three years. 
if the non executive director they have a relationship with the company where they are the non executive director in that company they have re re business relationship that was a material business relationship in the last 3 years then they cannot be a non executive director for that company it should be more than 3 3 years should exit because it will then they will not be considered as independent second employee in last 5 years if you have been an employee and now you are becoming a non executive director in the same company within 5 years you are not independent third cross directorship in other companies that means you are non executive director in one company in the other company you are executive director so you are supervising your own work you are monitoring no that should not be done you are receiving a remuneration other than the company director's fee it should not be the case not executive director they only receive the company the fee that you are supposed to get because you are not taking part in the company so you are not getting bonuses based on performance you are not getting share option so it should not be more than that if you are then you are not independent you are having close family ties with the director where you are the non executive director then you are not independent significant shareholder you cannot be a significant shareholder if you are non executive director you have served on the board for more than 9 years and now you are non executive director then you are not independent advantages advantages of what having nad on the board monitoring simplest advantages easiest to remember monitoring they monitor the remuneration committee also so because of that the remuneration that you are paying to the executive will not be so much will not be so excess right second expertise nad is come with their expertise so they can expand their resources okay perception what is the perception when they are on the board in their presence see uh, it is a perception that they are there to they are like a watch dog they watch over you they monitor what you are doing they supervise things so executive director automatically they will perform better like they will perform okay good they will not do things which are not appropriate in the presence of non executive director because non executive director have that perception people perceive about them like that so it's an advantage communication okay the implied improvement in communication between shareholder interest and the company automatically shareholder can easily communicate with the non executive director because non executive director is on the board to promote the interest of the shareholder only that is their only duty so shareholders if no non executive director is on the board whom will the shareholders uh, communicate with you understand so communication is easier discipline is there they will have a positive influence on the success the nads then disadvantages every advantages comes with disadvantages if you are studying some advantages no remember the disadvantages also other side of it unity if there are a lack of trust okay then if the executive director does not uh, trust the board shareholder does not trust the non executive director then it's a problem second quality yes non executive director having on the board is good they have the expertise but what if the non executive director that has been selected comes from the pool that does not have expertise that have a poor gene pool they are made, all of them are made of poor gene pool then what so quality suffers no decision making suffers liability what does it mean remuneration is poor often to non executive director they are not much satisfied because they only get their fee that's it unlike executive director why because according to the hicks report also what is hicks report by the way hicks report is for non executive director okay there's a report separately on non executive director so the hicks report they suggested that remove the stock options from the package for non executive director okay and stock options are removed but they have equal liability as executive director in law according to law both of them are equally liable for the company operations so if this is the case stock options your remuneration is poor 
but your liability is the uh, same as executive director so it's very questionable that obviously they might not want the job or they might leave the jobs on not executive director so it's a liability their liability is increased coming to the fifth topic chairman and the ceo the very important is this every year the, look at the past paper trend i'm not saying predict questions but what i have seen is this question comes separation of chairman and ceo why they have to be separated why separation is good or why it is not good things like that chairman you have to understand what is his role his role is he runs the board and he appoints ceo who runs the company ceo is also part of board of director only okay chairman is at the top see first is the shareholder shareholder appoints the chairman and that chairman appoints ceo and that ceo runs the company ceo are the basically the managers <coughs> okay responsibilities okay see corporate governance says separate the role of both the chairman and the ceo don't let one person have both don't let one person be both the chairman and the ceo of the company of course there are some uh, exceptions to it under certain conditions but normally separate them that's what corporate governance is why single hand should not have so much of power otherwise it's, they can easily dominate the board next what are their responsibilities has to be very clear it's not similar it looks similar it's not similar it's different it should be set out in writing and clearly it has to be agreed by all the board members let us go through their overall and then we'll go one by one through the specific responsibilities of the chairman and the ceo okay the C, the chairman's overall responsibility is two number one ensure that both sets and implements their direction and the strategy they basically set the strategy second they lead the company what are the aims what should be the policies okay to the shareholder ceo's overall responsibility is they take the responsibility of the performance of the company okay they take the battle it's like a relay they take the battle from one in a relay you know right there are several people and then they take the battle from one to the other they pass it on and then they finish the race right same like this chairman they decide on the direction of the strategy of the company they set the strategy ceo from there on was they take on that and they implement that strategy so basically they take responsibility for the performance of the company the ceo and they report to the chairman and the board of directors they have accountability towards the chairman okay the ceo let us go to the specific responsibilities for both chairman and ceo okay this list is big that was just overall understand briefly specific number one leadership to the board they give the vision they imagine okay and they work closely with ceo also while doing it second leadership role they lead how board has to be made up of what should the what should be the structure of the board should it be a unitary board to tie a board we went through right unity and two tie previously yeah so what should be the size of the board chairman decides all this what should be the balance how much what percentage should be executive and how much of percentage should be nad how many effectiveness of the directors how they uh, cooperate with each other how they interact with each other they set the board's agenda they plan the board meetings okay the chairman they chair all the board meetings okay they ensure that board receives all the information correct information timely information accurate information they facilitate effective contribution from nads okay that means they make sure chairman has to make sure nads are contributing effectively it is the role of the chairman they hold meetings with nads okay without the executive directors present they chair the agm agm is annual general meeting chairman has to be there and also other shareholder meetings also where they have a communication with the shareholder they discuss governance and major strategy with major shareholders and they make sure that whatever the views of the shareholders are it is effectively communicated on the board okay now coming to the ceo ceo you can think of a manager so he 
implement this policies that is set by the chairman second they are accountable to the board okay full accountability third they manage all physical and financial resources fourth effective team has to be built then they put all this in the place operational financial planning risk internal control system in the place they monitor operations and financial results according to the plan and the budget they interact with the board and the employees they, they they are that interface between the board and the employees the ceo okay because ceo is in the middle just think above ceo is the board the chairman and the board of directors below the ceo are the employees so they are that interface if inter if employees has to say anything to the board they cannot directly say to the board they have to come to the c they can only communicate with the ceo and then ceo passes that over to the board same way if the board has some instructions or rules needs to be followed by the employee they do not say directly to the employees they go to the ceo ceo is the one who will direct it to the employees so they are the middle interface the middle person between the two groups board and the employee the ceo okay assist in selection and evaluation of board members when you have to select someone when you have to evaluate the board members it is the ceo who does it and they represent the company to whom they are the one who talks with the major supplier major customer okay it is the ceo now main topic why do we split why uh, splitting is important number one representation why see chairman is solely a representative of shareholder how a shareholder will behave chairman behaves in a similar way he is just a shadow of the shareholder chairman you can say like that therefore he will not have any conflict of interest okay with no conflict of interest having a role as a manager so if he is a ceo also he becomes a manager you see he is having a conflict of interest he is having two roles on the other hand he is a shareholder the other hand he is a manager also being a ceo so become difficult second reason accountability if you are the ceo and you are the chairman to whom are you accountable ceo are accountable to the chairman but if you are both the person who do you account to so you see accountability third temptation temptation if you have more responsibilities single person role of the chairman or so role of the ceo very easily you can be you will be having self interest and you can become you can take advantage of your power then reasons against why you should not split number 1 unity rather than having two separate leaders chairman and the ceo better to have one leader who can perform both the task better second ability yes maybe he has ability to perform both the task then why not have one rather than having two and it, you have to pay a separate salary also so it's a expense to the company to have one chairman and the ceo so in that way ability wise yes better to have one <coughs> because if you see overall whether chairman or ceo both should have the knowledge of the company so if both has the knowledge of the company then why not have one single individual even nature it is very true okay human nature that if you are having a too high powered executive officers there will be some clash some issue will be there they will not be normal all the time they will not go align with each other all the time because human nature jealousy ego things like that come up anyway so better to have one then there will be no issue no conflict <coughs> sixth topic directors induction and cpd board of directors okay one is induction requirement when you are having a board of director for all the board of directors all the members in the board of director requires an induction remember they will not be getting appointed without an induction okay in the induction they understand the company they are linked with the employees and the induction program cpd continuing professional development basically in cpd this is small topic they just expand the knowledge and update knowledge even your acc you need to do a cpd you have to have the cpd continually professional development you have to keep on updating yourself okay formal cpd programs are there for that let us go through the induction process first before going to cpd 
every company has their own formal induction program and they should have it okay and when they have it it should be comprehensive everything needs to be understood through that induction you should not have doubt later on then it should be tailored to the needs of the company and individual directors not just general induction for every director <coughs> content selected written information has to be there plus some representation also some presentation some activity or side visit or some meetings give that appointees a balance and the real life overview of the company what a company the real life overview of the company looks like give him that it should be balanced both pros and pros and cons has to be given to him okay then mm -hmm. Not overload the new director with too much of information. See, when you are doing that induction process, don't give too much information in day one only itself to the director. He might not be able to take it. And provide that new director with list of the induction information. Okay, you have to make it so that they can call up anytime if they require anything. Now. Basically, this induction process, it gives the incoming director. Incoming means the director is coming in the organization. We are not talking about the outgoing director, we are coming the incoming director. He has to understand the nature of the company, the business, and the market where it, they operate. Second, has to be able to link with the company's people. Third, main relationship he has to understand of the company. Who are the company's auditor? Who are the company's major customer? Who are the customer's uh, company's major supplier? Needs to be understood through the induction process. Objectives of induction. What are the objectives of induction? Why it is held? So that you can communicate vision and culture. In this induction, you are normally saying this is the culture of my company or the vision of the company. Because here onwards, you take on that vision, you will be following the cultures like that. To communicate practical procedural duties. Some duties are very uh, procedural. There are steps, steps to it. This is step one, this is step two, step three. Three, you reduce the time taken. Okay, if you have an induction, okay, it reduces your time to be effective or to be productive in your duties. You become productive in your duties very fast. Without induction, it's difficult. You assimilate an individual as a welcome member of the board. You welcome them. Everyone likes to get welcome, right, on the board. So you make them, you you welcome them. And through this, you ensure that you are retaining them for the future. Okay, now induction package. Who is responsible for this? For the director's induction. Who does this director's induction? Company secretary. Company secretary. According to the ICSA, the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrations, Administrators. Most of you will be very shocked to know why. Because secretaries, when you think about secretaries, what do you think? Carrying a briefcase. Okay going behind the chairman or the ceo giving him uh, the daily schedule or planning schedules for him meetings for him that's what the job of secretaries do there are separate courses of secretary in fact the secretary of the company is the one who has the most duty and he or she should know everything about the company including the laws he has the most power highest power after CEO, the ceo of the company he is the one who performs everything on behalf of the CEO, the chairman, he plans everything, all the meetings of the minute of meetings, details of the minute of meetings are with the secretaries. So you need, and there are courses also, and the salary, the package is very high. Okay. So according to this ICSA, the induction package, okay, in the induction package, there has to be this following things has to be there for the director. Director's duty. What are the director's duty? Has to be mentioned in the induction package only. Direct the company secretary does all this, okay? Number one, briefly outline the roles and responsibilities of the director under the course of best practice. Already we have covered it. Okay. Second, advice on share dealing and disclosure of price sensitive information. Some information. You cannot share you need to keep it confidential you have to talk about it company information on matters reserved for the board so, for example delegated authority or policy for obtaining independent advice fire drill procedure okay 
under director's duty this comes then company strategy also has to be there after the director's duty it is a company strategy that has to be there under the induction package current strategy what is your current strategy what is your current plan and budget what are your annual accounts in terms and kpis what are your company structure your subsidiary you have how many joint ventures you have treasury issues such as finance and dividend policy company brochures mission statements okay this things has to be there then induction then board operation what are the memorandum and articles of association minutes of four to six previous meetings you should have board composition what are the profiles of the member they have a background of the finance or accountant education wise their age wise their experience wise board composition NED, AD, male, female, how it is made up of. Unity, two tire, like that. Details of committees risk committee, divination committee, audit committee, nomination committee. Okay. Their meeting procedure, how they meet, and what are their schedule for the future meetings needs to be there in the induction package. See, one thing before I go ahead, I would like to say that. All those things, theory that you are learning, induction package has to have this. This is how you have to set that even. This might not be relevant for your exam or you might not even come for your exam, all of it. But in your practical life, when you go in a job, when you're actually going for a job and doing it, for an interview or you're going to go through the interview, you're going to face all this. You need all this practical knowledge because I've told you as well is very practical. So even though it is not relevant for exam, you might not come all of this, but always think practical that this will be very relevant for your real life, in the real life world. So you anyway have to go through it. A few months later okay you'll be having company's history plus the product and service details of advisory their lawyers their auditors banks details of major shareholder and customer copies of agent circulars from three previous year copies of management accounts okay details of risk management procedure and what are your disaster recovery plans do you have backups IT backups, manual backups, is there in the company? All this details has to be given. It is a few months later, these things will be given to you, not in the beginning. Then what are the policies, health and safety, environmental ethics, charitable, then what are the recent press release, the reports, articles, details of five largest customer and supplier, full details of the code of compliance, how you have complied with the compliance code of compliance details will be given and company policy now coming to the cpd the following offers guidance on director cpd requirements okay to run an effective board companies need to provide resources for developing and refreshing knowledge okay including NADs. Second, chairman has to address this development needs of the board. Chairman has to look after whether CPD is given or not. They have taken the course or not of CPD. Okay, so that team is effective. And again, the chairman, they only have to lead them. What are the development needs of the individual? They have to lead them. Along with the company secretary. Company secretary along with the chairman will play a key role in giving that uh, CPD. And NEDs, they have to be prepared to devote time to keeping their skills up to date. Remember, mostly we talk about NEDs because <coughs> executive directors are automatically given the CPD. They are running, they are in the operation of the company, they are in the company attached to it. But non-executive director, they only give few of their time. Not They are not full-time employees. So you have to make sure they devote their time so that their skills are up to date. What are the objectives of CPD? One is that CPD is there so that directors have sufficient skills and they are effective in their role. Second, they can communicate the challenges. If there are any changes in the business environment, effectively they can communicate to the directors. Third, it improves the board, board's effectiveness. Then, suppose the directors in their personal development also. Then, overall purpose is what? It gives benefits to the individual as well as the organization. That's the main thing. That's it. Then we are coming towards the next topic. Legal and regulatory framework. 
governing the board of directors as i told you there are some legal required frame, framework will be there what are the legal rights and responsibilities we are going to cover that conflicts of interest inside the trading appointment retirement how do you appoint how do you retire how do you remove there are laws to it okay disqualification of directors why they are disqualified on what basis you need to know this five areas out of this five areas first three areas we are covering in this lecture legal rights and responsibilities these are the legal rights okay but before that why we have to study the legal rights if a director is seen to breach any of their what do you say mm. condition okay they are going to be open to criminal prosecution or even imprisonment they can go to prison also if they do any corporate scandals right money laundering if they have, they are found in money laundering gone they might sometimes be disqualified as a director also that means they cannot act as a director anymore okay they have to go by certain rules and regulations they have to follow directors have a legal duties objective of it the objective of having this legal right and responsibility is simply to protect the owners of the company simply because director is having huge amount of responsibility on their shoulder with high, huge power so they company owner <coughs> that means the shareholder they they need to be protected okay why see it exists because of the fiduciary re relationship that means fiduciary relationship is duty of care and trust when you give duty of care and trust when one person acts on behalf of another when you give your task to someone else he will be performing your job on behalf of you that is known as fiduciary relationship so same way board also have a fiduciary relationship to the shareholder that's why that's why to protect the shareholder you need legal rights and as you have they have to be legally bound imagine if there were no laws and regulations for director they can do any way they want they can perform just imagine that case what would be the position of the shareholder whom are they going to complain if things go wrong how are they going to protect themselves no protection nothing that's why so law is a framework beyond this only directors can perform more than that they cannot go they cannot exit it if they do they have to pay fine or they will be prosecuted or they will be imprisoned okay now power let us talk about power when we are talking about legal rights and responsibility see directors they do not have unlimited power how we used to think earlier right most of you must have thought earlier that this directors have unlimited power they can do anything with their power no they are restricted their power are restricted according to article of association see their powers are mentioned in articles of association every company has memorandum and article of association okay their power of directors are mentioned so articles of association what do they say they provide a framework for how directors operate including the need to be reelected every director needs to be reelected after every 3 year this shows you cannot be a director forever after every, after 3 years you will not be a director automatically you will be removed if you are not reelected second shareholder resolution is there under the power the curtails this curtails director's action in a legal sense because shareholder resolution is there automatically director's action is curtailed provision of law there could be health and safety or duty of care board decisions if a board makes a decision that is in the interest of shareholder okay it is the board sorry that makes decision in the interest of the shareholder not individual directors okay so remember your power is automatically limited why because you as an individual director you cannot do anything you together as a board only can take action decision in the interest of shareholder so you are taking a collective view rather than individual and directors do however have unlimited liability yes they limited uh, sorry liability is unlimited for directors in what sense in the sense that even if they delegate their actions to the management below the directors in the legal eyes it is the director who still will have the 
who will have to suffer the circumstances if things go wrong he will be charged he will for the liability for the outcome that liability for the outcome he cannot delegate to anyone yes maybe responsibilities he can uh, delegate to the manager below him maybe the activities that needs to be done he can perform but not the liability for the outcome that will be borne by the directors only according to the legal laws fiduciary duties second point after power is fiduciary duties see we are aware of the power of the directors okay so okay so this leads to the consideration of the nature of the fiduciary relationship also how it will be fiduciary relationship says you need to add in a good faith you are appointed for someone you have to add in their for their whatever is good for them so as long as the directors motives are honest okay and they are genuinely believed to be acting in the best interest of the company it's okay okay they are normally safe from claims otherwise according to the law if you are not doing so you have to pay for it okay you are breaching the law then duty of skill and care duty of skill and care is a specific a specific fiduciary duty and the law says what the law requires a director to use reasonable skill and care when you are performing a task as a director according to the law you cannot say i don't have this knowledge or i was not updated for this i i studied this thing now no you have to update yourself you have to have that reasonable skill and care also care you cannot neglect you cannot ignore things you cannot be careless penalties if you are breaching duties you have to face civil action by the company director okay if the director is in breach he will have to do those things whatever the contract is made by the director automatically becomes null and it becomes null right you cannot it's void okay that means it will not be practiced anymore it's now not anymore going to be exercised the contract is nullified okay it will not be accepted anymore then a new contract has to be made in that case then there will be a personal there may be a personally liable for damages okay directors will might be sometimes personally also liable for the damages if they are negligent and all sometimes they have to force to restore the company property at their own expense they have to get back the company property conflict of interest is there okay when this conflict of interest comes when directors are contracting with their own company they contract with the listed company they loan to the director substantial property transaction has been there okay then there's a conflict of interest let us go let us go through each of it directors contracting with their own company in general directors cannot contract contract with their own company normally you cannot but articles specifically allow sometimes the director to have an interest as long as he discloses his interest to the board of director that means contract is saying you can have a contract but you have to disclose that interest to the board of directors second contract with listed companies according to the listing rule of london stock exchange as an example they have stipulated that if you are having any substantial contract between the company and an interested party it has to be agreed by ordinary resolution before actually it happens okay there are two types of resolution that could be that will be done in the agm general annual general meeting one is ordinary resolution the other one is extraordinary resolution okay then loan to the directors loans to the directors are generally they are prohibited okay substantial property transactions let us go through this example to understand it more all those things is not so much required this figures and all don't memorize it but let us understand what companies 
act in UKCs. This is as an example taken. What to understand the meaning of substantial? What is the substantial? What is the threshold for the substantial? As I say, so substantial asset sale above 10 percent of net worth okay if something is above 10 percent of net worth is substantial otherwise it is not substantial asset sale so above 10 percent of net worth has to be approved by the shareholder through ordinary resolution okay now whatever the asset in the question is given to you it has to be of a requisite value if it is not a requisite value it cannot qualify as a substantial property okay if the asset is less than 5000 pounds it is of not re requisite value and transaction transaction will not be a substantial property transaction okay then you don't have to worry about it but if the asset is more than 100000 pounds remember always always it will be a substantial property transaction but what if it's between 5000 to 10000 the asset worth then it will qualify as being of a, re a requisite value if it is worth more than 10% of the company's net asset. <coughs> okay. According to the company's most recent accounts. Or if no accounts has been prepared, then 10% of the company's call of share capital. All those things is not required. You don't have to do all these calculations. So don't worry about it. Now, coming to the ruling of insider dealing and trading. Insider dealing or trading illegal it has been illegalized you cannot practice it it is an illegal but what does insider trading means illegal purchase of sale or uh, purchase or sale of shares by someone most of the time it is a director who have some insider information which no one has the information has not been made public to the company you have got that information somehow and you have accordingly sold or purchased the shares that is known as insider trading because if publicly this information was made available it could affect the share price but before that you took the advantage it is known as insider trading it is illegal okay insider information means information which you have access to which is not yet made available to the public it was supposed to remain confidential second if this type of transactions happen okay type of transaction in the company's own share it is fraud it's a fraud the director insider what does it mean that means you are accepting employment okay simply by accepting employment has made a contract with the shareholder to put the shareholders interest before their own that means you have made a contract that you will put your interest before the shareholders interest sorry uh, has made a contract with the shareholder to put the shareholders interest before their own okay that is known as director insider that means you are going to accept employment by making a contract that you are going to put the shareholders interest before your own and when the insider buys or sales upon whatever the company own information he is viola violating that contract because he has a fiduciary duty towards the shareholders remember but you are violating that now let us go through two scenarios to understand are there what uh, how do you know that this is an example of insider training or not okay scenario one the chairman of the company zz knows before any public announcement that company zz is to be taken over Therefore, he buys the shares in company ZZ knowing that share price will probably go up. Is this an insider trading or not? Definitely, it's an insider trading. It's a yes. Second scenario. In a bar, he hears the CEO of a company that the next table tailing, uh, sorry, at the next table telling that the sales director that the company is to be taken over. That means he overheard. The CEO telling the sales director that the company is going to be taken over. And then the individual buys the share. This is this a insider trading or no? It's a bit complicated. It's no, it's not an insider trading. Why? Why? Whoever the individual who has bought the share, he's not guilty of insider trading. 
because he does not have any close connection with this company if he was the company's director or if he had if he have any close connection with the company and then he takes this decision to purchase the share then yes it's an insider trading but now he's not an insider he's an outsider so this is not an insider trading he overheard that's it performance evaluation of the board how do you evaluate the board these are the questions that has to be considered okay when you're evaluating the board remember number one how well the board performed against the performance objectives that has been set okay you have some objectives how well the board has outperformed them or underperformed them you have to see second how the board has contributed to the testing and the development of the strategy how well they have developed or tested the strategy third what is their contribution there means the board's contribution in ensuring robust and effective risk management is the composition of the board appropriate or the committees that are set up they are appropriate they have the right mix of knowledge okay are the relationships inside and outside the board working effectively okay how the board has responded to any problems or crisis that have emerged or can they foresee that it could emerge could they uh, should they have been foreseen this before are the matters specifically reserved for the board the right ones <coughs> how well the board communicates with the management team how effective effectively does they use their agm or the an, an annual report is the board as a whole are they updated to the latest development in the regulatory environment and in the market how effective are the board committees the four committees risk committee nomination committee audit committee elimination committee okay specific questions on the performance of each committee should be included okay performance of each four committee has to be included specifically not just all the committees together for example what is their role their composition the interaction now the process okay that helps underpins the board should also be evaluated what is the process that tells you okay this board is effective that also has to be evaluated number one is appropriate timely information of the right length and quality provided the board and the management responsive to the request for the clarification or application see if you are giving the right information timely information right length also right quality also are they responsive to the request for the clarify are they clarifying doubts you have to see that are the board giving feedback to the management on its requirement whatever the board meetings are there is it appropriate length for the proper consideration of issues because sometimes meetings are too long no value is there you are not adding any value you have to see are you adding any value to the meeting or not is the time used effectively are the board's procedures conducive to effective performance and flexible enough to deal with all eventualities whatever the board procedures are there it has to deal with all the eventualities it has to be flexible enough okay now when you evaluating chairman and nids is the chairman demonstrating enough effective leadership are the relationships and communications with shareholders well managed that means the chairman's relationship or it could be for the nad also relationships and communications within the board constructive among the board not just with the shareholder within the board members are they having a constructive relationship are they communicating well you have to see this when you are evaluating the performance relationship also considers there not just the financial performance but all kind of performance are the process for setting the agenda working do they enable board members to raise issues and concerns you should be able to raise concerns if you are not you are not effective you are not performing well is the company secretary being used appropriately and to maximum value you have to be able to use the company secretary properly if not then you are not performing well now you have to ask these questions okay the chairman and the other entities you have to consider this following issues and whoever the individual is concerned they have to ask 
okay they should be asked to assess themselves you have to answer this following questions by answering that means how well prepared you are or informed you are for the board meetings this is both for the chairman and the nids this is applicable they will answer for themselves are they well prepared are they well informed for the board meetings is the meeting attendance satisfactory or no okay are they giving their time enough to understand the company and the business are they participating outside the board room such as vis visiting sites and all what has been the quality of their contribution what is the value of their contribution at the board meetings what is their contribution to the development of the strategy and the risk management this is applicable for both chairman and the nads okay this list do not memorize i'm again telling you please do not memorize this how successful have the bought their knowledge and experience to bear in the consideration of strategy how see you are having some knowledge but it's not uh, i would not i would be wrong if i say 100% you will be using all the knowledge no most of the time you will not be using all the knowledge that you have acquired only maybe 10% of it is applicable so you have to see how successfully the knowledge that you have you are actually using it to for the strategy how effectively have they prohibit uh, prohibited to test information assumptions okay where necessary how resolute are they in maintaining their own views and resisting pressure from others are they able to maintain pressure from others so sometimes you have to give opinion against others okay and you have to be very strong in that you have to face you will be facing some pressure but are you able to resist it or are you are not that is the main thing then how effectively and proactively have they followed up their areas of concern if you having some areas of concern are you following it up or no what how effective are you in your relationship with the fellow board members with the company secretary or the senior manager and does their performance or through their behavior can you endanger mutual trust and respect can you trust them through their behavior performance no how successfully and <coughs> actively do they refresh their knowledge you have to see are there do they have the latest developments in areas such as corporate governance and financial reporting what is the industry and market condition how well do they communicate with their fellow board members can they present their views convincingly yet diplomatically and they and they make sure that others are also listening to them now board committees in the board committees these are the four board committees as i told nomination go along okay not downwards nomination remuneration risk and audit committee let us go through this very important keep this chart with you okay you need it throughout the lecture nomination and risk committee majority are non executive director when i say majority it could be executive director also on the board but majority it is non executive director in fact all the board have non executive director but majority is non executive director nomination and risk committee but when it comes to remuneration and audit committee no executive directors are there 100% non executive director because the importance is more when it comes to audit committee you are in the monitoring position when you come to innovation committee again you are monitoring the remuneration the package the salary so that's why it is 100% non executive they didn't take the chance of having executive director no risk but nomination and risk committee is not so risky nomination committee you nominate someone you appoint someone and risk committee is not mandatory you might have you might not have that's why it's not 100% non executive okay coming to the nomination committee one by one we'll go along nomination committee they set up the structure of the board how the structure of the board should be what should be the size remuneration the pay salary what should be the pay what should be the other benefits of the executive risk committee what should be the company's exposure to the risk how they manage audit committee internal control audit and external control sorry and external audit okay now importance of the board importance of the committee why you have to have this committee the first importance of a committee that it reduces your workload the board's workload and enables them to focus on other issues okay 
committees are there for some special purposes okay like risk committee they'll be looking after risk audit committee they'll be auditing remuneration committee they will be working on the remuneration of executives and the nomination committee they'll be hiring people recruiting people so because of this for the board the work reduces if committees are there second importance is it has a structure it creates a structure okay everyone is using their own expertise to run the committee risk committee has their own expertise audit so things are working in a structure based rather than one person has to do manage everything so this improves decisions third communicate to shareholders okay communicate to shareholders and directors take this issue seriously having a committee shows that you are taking issues seriously for example in an organization if you're having a risk committee means you are taking your risk management very important it gives a signal to the shareholders fourth increase in shareholder confidence okay shareholders will be more confident to know that there's a committee that means certain issues are being handled then communicate to stakeholders the importance of remuneration and risk okay see remuneration and risk okay these are two committees which uh, not every organization has okay special the risk committee okay sometimes risk is managed by the board of directors only no separate committee is there but having it shows the importance to the stakeholders that no you are managing the risk it gives a signal to the other stakeholders other than the shareholder satisfy requirements of uk corporate governance code according to the uk corporate governance code it says the best practice is you have to have committee okay so it satisfy that requirement as well next so let us go through this committee one by one nomination committee okay nomination committee says that according to the uk corporate governance code there should be a formal and a transparent procedure okay for the appointment of new directors when you are appointing new directors it should not be done in isolation or hidden it should be known to everyone it should be transparent it should be very formal because directors are at the top level so when you are hiring them there should be a formal structure and it should be it should be known to everyone visible transparent okay and how a nomination committee is created let's go through the creation of it and this points by the way you one must know this from your exams point of view it's very important that you know this points okay because sometimes you might have to talk about advantages of having a committee and disadvantages so you have to know this points for all the four committees okay so for nomination committee we have seen that chart in the previous few slides that majority of it should be non executive director not 100% but majority okay majority must more than 50% has to be non executive director in the nomination committee sitting in the nomination committee okay the chairman should chair except when considering his successor okay it is the chairman only he has to chair but if chairman is planning to retire he might have to give it to his successor that time the chairman cannot chair the board he have to give it to the successor other than that it is the chairman who will be chairing the board okay second candidate see nomination means what you are hiring you are nominating candidates for the directors level so how do you how do you choose the candidate based on their skill based on their knowledge and based on the experience it's very important that you check that this matches with the company's requirement then chairman's other commitments should be noted in the annual report okay it's not just the regular commitment chairman will have other commitments also and this has to be noted in the annual report don't memorize this points memorizing this points will not help you understand think that you are in a company you have a nomination company how are you going to hire people if you have to hire an employee not an employee a director the, your employee is a director and director is so important that's why when you hiring them also you have to take uh, into consideration some additional points and you have to be very formal okay what are the entity terms what are their conditions okay other commitments stated okay because nad is the one who is their majority in the board in the nomination committee you have to know their terms and conditions and also if they have other commitments nad is will might, might be having other commitments as well that has to be noted then 
executives should not be members of any other FTSE 100 company board. Remember the executives in the board, if you're having it, in the board means in the nomination committee, they cannot be member of any other FTSE 100 company board. What is FTSE 100 company board? FTSE 100 company, please go and check in Google. You will get it. N number of companies are there. And a separate section has to be there in the annual report describing the work of the committee. Okay. What this committee does, separate section is there in the annual report. has to be there. So this is how a nomination committee has to be made. Same way you have to do for the risk committee, audit committee and uh, remuneration committee. Okay. Now what are the responsibilities of this committee? Number one, it reviews regularly. It's not just once a year annually, no. Because you need people more often, right? It's not just once a year only you need people. Some, they live in between. You need to see regularly you have to review what is the structure of the board of the committee what is the size what is the composition it is male female you want more female in the board what is the size is it big it is small what are the and uh, executive director versus non-executive director in the board you have to manage it so you have to see all this review and then you have to make recommendations to the board nomination committee is the one who makes recommendation to the board that we need this level uh, this, this 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 candidate with this this, this skills with this, this experience female male like this okay so it is a no part of the nomination committee they make recommendations to make recommendations they have to review the structure the size the composition of the board they don't make recommendations on their own opinion okay second consider the balance this is very important when you are considering a committee any committee consider the balance between executive and non-executive your executive should not be too much it should not be more than non-executive it should be 50 50 and in some it's hundred percent non-executive director only okay third ensure appropriate management of diversity to board company when you're taking looking at the board make sure there's a diversity in the board for example male female or uh, young people old people experienced less experienced okay see uh, diversity could be in any form in your ethnicity or race your gender your uh, social class anything we have went through their diversity it was our topic number three right so we went in the earlier slides so that's the same thing then provide an appropriate balance of power to reduce domination you don't let one person sit be both a ceo and the chairman one example is that divide the rule make two people so that power is not uh, in under one hand okay when you're making that executive selection, make sure CEO is someone else, chairman is someone else. Unless there are some issues where CEO left, then chairman might add as CEO, the CEO might have to add as chairman. Exceptional cases are there, but we are not talking about it right now. We are talking in normal scenario. Keep them separate. Then, regularly you have to evaluate the balance of skill also. Sometimes it's very possible that uh, you have hired someone, they might have become, their skills might not be appropriate any longer or the knowledge that they have is outdated make sure that they are up to date okay you have to evaluate whether they are currently having the skill when you hire them let's say you have hired them four years back or three years back you have to make sure regularly whether it is still important or not the skills that they have the knowledge that they have the experience that they bring to the board all this will be checked by the nomination committee and this features you have to know for any committee all the four committees you have to know what are their responsibilities how they are created these two things you have to know about any committee. It will be asked in the exam. Not all four, but any one or two might be asked. Most of the time it's asked in the exam. Okay. Then, responsibilities of a nomination committee. It's not and the list is more here in the next slide. Giving full consideration to succession planning for directors. Remember, in the nomination committee is not only hiring today. They have to think for the future. Okay. They have to see when a person is retiring, who is able to take his or her position who is going to be a successor to him or her they have to plan accordingly then prepare a description of the role and capabilities okay for any board members including chairman everyone should know their role everyone should know their capabilities and it will be written it will be described by the nomination committee then identify and nominate for the approval by the board candidates to fill the board vacancies as and when they arise Sometimes there might be some vacancies that needs to be filled. Make sure that you get the approval by the board candidate to nominate and fill the board. 
it should not be empty for too long someone has to be there to fill that boat okay and you have to get the approval for that make recommendations to the board concerning the standing for reappointment of directors you can even make recommendations to the board the nomination committee okay regarding reappointment of directors being seen to operate independently for the benefit of shareholders see nomination committee is there okay you can say it's a part of a board but still they are independent they operate independently for the benefit of shareholders okay now coming to the ceo chairman succession okay very important topic again this also very frequently it comes in the exam very frequently i've said this topic in the nomination committee especially the ceo chairman succession it does not mean you forget about other things and concentrate only on this no that's not what i meant but the percentage the weightage give more towards this when you are studying because this has a very high chance of coming in the exam and it has come already so the search for a potential replacement ceo begins immediately after a new ceo is appointed remember it's not when the ceo actually leaves or when things become bad then you start planning for ceo new ceo no the day you have appointed a new new ceo that day itself you are finding a replacement for that ceo that day itself. so you are having two CEO, ceos in your mind one is currently is appointed the other one will be the later on when this one leaves who will be his replacement okay so you have to search accordingly like that because finding a ceo is very difficult remember that you're not finding some uh, uh trainee or a fresh uh, interns no finding those is there there are plenty of it in the market you will get it but ceo is very difficult okay the more you go higher up the level in your professional level the harder it becomes for a company to find a replacement for you that's why you keep the replacement ready so that the day the current ceo lives the next is ready the replacement is ready because all the responsibilities all the uh, the what do i say the major decisions are done by the ceo he runs the company he has to be there in the company okay now for the nomination committee to have access to senior managers see when you are finding a replacement of ceo how do you do that you mostly see in the senior manager okay because it is the next it is from the senior manager only who will get appointed as a ceo you are not going to find from someone as a fresh intern or a middle level manager or a lower level manager no it will be someone from the senior manager only okay he will get promoted as a ceo but to do that you have to assess who nomination committee okay whenever i say you means think you are the nomination committee in this case so nomination committee has to see based on their performance how they are performing the senior managers second to have some idea of a success in the case the new ceo dies or leaves some idea you have to have who is going to be a good successor in case the ceo dies or leaves tomorrow some idea the the nomination committee has to have then to monitor senior managers and cultivate possible successes over time okay you keep on monitoring so it's mostly repetition if you see but never mind the main idea is you monitor the senior manager you see their performance okay for a search firm okay that to be retained for this and other dictatorship identification sometimes you might give this job to someone else to find a successor or a replacement for the ceo to some company some agency and for which you are going to give him a fee okay to think very carefully as to whether the company wants a visionary at the helm or someone who can execute strategy effectively okay you want to know when you are thinking think carefully who what do you want a person who has a vision or someone who can execute the strategy effectively you give them a strategy someone else may have the plan someone else has a mission or a vision tells them and you just execute you are in execution or not you are not actually imagining or creating anything so you have to think carefully okay now the ned chairman non executive director chairman should meet independence criteria at the time of appointment okay when you are appointing a chairman the non executive director chairman in the nomination committee he has to be independent when you are appointing him for the first time of the company okay independence criteria is met at the time of appointment later on it's fine if he's not independent but the time he is appointed he has to be independent 
now coming to the next topic from the remuneration so the nomination committee we are moving towards the remuneration here we are going to talk about directors remuneration how they have to be prized how the remuneration committee works similar to nomination committee how this works okay so directors remuneration why directors remuneration is a separate topic See, our ultimate topic is what in this lecture board of directors. Everything regarding directors only we are going to study. How they are appointed, how they are fired, what is their remuneration, how long they have to serve the board, what does the, the, the corporate governance say about it, all those things we are going to cover. Okay. So, this is the main theme. Just understand the main big picture and then these are little, little big things that we are going through. Okay. At the end, you have to fit all these pieces together and make that big puzzle, solve that big puzzle. Okay. So, now the next is director's remuneration and for this we even have a report also the greenberry report okay this report talks about director's remuneration in 1995 it was developed what does it say and you have to know this okay some you don't have to know in detail what this report is okay do you have to go google and search entire report no only understand green very report is for director's remuneration understand that much okay and let's see what the report says so there was a committee that was formed okay because shareholder were having some concern regarding director's remuneration they feel they are remunerated very heavily okay compensation is very high for the directors okay so the report now wants to focus on what so that there's a balance between the salary and the performance so that shareholder again get back that confidence no no that debtors remunerations are fair it's not too high that is the main our main issue is debtors remunerations too high now you have to solve it that's why this report came greenberry report salary your salary has to go in line with the performance that you are giving to the company performance has to increase salary increases okay now similar to nomination committee come to the remuneration committee role of remuneration committee okay the main role is this three i have highlighted it for you okay when you are giving reward to someone make sure you at you are attracting someone through that reward your reward has to be attractive otherwise why will you join you will go to your competitor no if it's not attractive you cannot always think from the point of your company that you have to bring down the cost so i'm going to give no it has to be attractive number one number two retain he should be retained in the company okay attracting is okay but after that you have to work more harder to retain and third motivate it should be motivating if it's too less they will not be if it's too high uh, it's a cost for you but the performance is not good so either way they will be demotivated so they have, it has to be motivating so attract retain motivate okay in such a way you have to set up your reward policy okay now what is the objective of the committee so that is the one role of remuneration committee okay objective of the committee is what Remember, remuneration committee, 100% non-executive director has to be there on the board. Okay, same like audit committee, audit and remuneration committee. We saw in that chart earlier. So the committee is seen to be independent with access to its own external advice or consultants. This committee is very independent. All are independent non-executive directors only. They will be giving advice. They have their own consultant regarding the reward, how the policy of remuneration policy has to be. Second, objective is when they are having a policy on remuneration, it has to be clear and it has to be supported by other shareholders. Understood how it is priced, how you are remunerated based on what basis and it has to be, other shareholders have to support it also. Third, when you are giving some performance packages, make sure it is aligned with the long-term interest of the shareholder because everything is falls under that. Shareholder interest has to be maximized. Okay, shareholder wealth has to be maximized. Shareholder interest has to be protected, long-term shareholder. So, performance packages has to be uh, in align with that. And reporting. When you are reporting this remuneration of the directors has to be clear, has to be brief and and when you are reading, when it, and what it has to give to the reader? Birth's eye view of policy payment. Overall, what is the birth's eye means? every detail they have to know in the remuneration what is my fixed salary what is my uh, 
bonus what is my what what else from share option scheme how much you are getting if you have one so things like that detailed it has to be very detailed and also there should be reason behind them it has to be understood what is the rational behind them if you are giving a bonus to someone let's say 20 percent 30 percent what is the reason behind why is that person is he actually the worth it of that bonus is he actually contributing anything to the performance of the company if no then why the bonus so this question is this reasons okay has to be there there should be some reason rational to it you cannot keep on giving bonuses if it's actually not contributing to anything next responsibilities okay responsibilities object to similar only you will see there are similarities it's just it comes under different heading okay so you have to review the framework okay what is the policy remuneration policy the broad policy and the specific terms of the remuneration you have to know the terms and conditions okay all those things are the are the responsibilities of the remuneration company they have to know it what are the specific terms how they are going to pay what are the terms and conditions of employment of the chairman especially chairman and also executive director because remuneration committee get pays chairman and the executive director we are not talking about non-executive director because non-executive director will be paid by the shareholder because remuneration committee is made up of 100% non-executive director so they are there to give remuneration to the executive director and the chairman so they are there for that okay also how the targets will be designed and also how the bonus schemes this will be designed by the remuneration committee okay they design it second recommend and monitor the level and the structure of the remuneration of senior manager when you are giving remuneration to senior manager what should be the level and what should be the structure you have to recommend remuneration committee pension provision policy you have to establish for all board members it's done by remuneration committee then regarding remuneration it has to be detailed detailed not just the summary version detailed for all individual executive directors how much they are getting in that total amount what is their bonus what is their fixed salary what is their benefits in kind if they are getting any or the share option scheme okay also for the chairman not just executive director also for the chairman and also any pension right if they have any compensation payment has to be detailed the list is not ending let's see on the next slide we have responsibilities more responsibilities okay ensure that both executive director and the key management whoever it is there the senior managers they are rewarded very fair they are rewarded fairly okay what for whatever they are contributing individually for the performance it should not be too high otherwise it's a cost for the company and is not fair also according to the corporate governance it should not be too low also the reward otherwise it will not be motivating they will not stay there it should be fair reasonable demonstrate to shareholders okay that the remuneration when you are setting see when the remuneration committee is setting this remuneration for the executive director and the chairman or the key manager make sure okay that the remuneration committee does not have any personal interest whatever the remuneration is okay they should not have any personal interest, personal or self interest agree any compensation for loss of office of any executive director okay when there is any loss of office of any executive director you have to agree to a compensation remuneration committee and whatever there are provisions regarding disclosure that you have to disclose remuneration even pension are set out where in director's remuneration report regulation 2002 there's a separate report for it also where they say you have to disclose this remuneration director's remuneration even pension what is the pension you have to disclose okay no need to go in detail to this report is not needed now what is remuneration first understand remuneration is it could be any payment that the directors receive from the company or any compensation okay and what are the things that are included in remuneration number one base salary that is your fixed salary then any bonuses you might get you might not get but bonuses is also comes under remuneration then also other benefits like benefits in kind or share option schemes if you have any other schemes where you are getting it payment from that is taken under remuneration okay 
Now, what is the behavioral impacts on directors of nomination component? See, there are some impacts. Change the directors behave in a certain way based on the remuneration component. Let's go through this. It's very important to know this. Every element of remuneration is not just that your salary is right and forget about other things. Your bonuses could be low. No, every element starting from your salary to your bonuses to your termination payment or compensation has to be designed very uh, accurately or I would say it has to be reasonable. Okay, every element in the remuneration package. So the directors are motivated. They, they are retained. Second, there should be a balance. When you're offering a package, balance has to be there. One thing cannot be too high, the other thing is too less in the package, no. That is too small and has demotivated. If it's too small, you are demotivated. If it's easily, okay, that is too easily earned. It should not be that it is too easily earned. Okay, it should not be too difficult also, but not too easily earned also. Otherwise, you will lose the, uh, what do I say? You will lose the motivation. You will easily become bored. So, too easily earned and too small. Strike a balance between this. The company following the work of the remission company should. Okay, again, this is the repetition of the remission company's role only. Provide a package that attract, retain, motivate. Okay, but don't pay more than this. If it attracts, retains, and motivates, one package is decided. Stay in that package, no need to pay more than that. Avoid it. If it's necessary, avoid it. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Judge where to position the remission package related to other comp companies. When you are having this remuneration, it's not easy because it's not only based on your company uh, performance and all. You have to Keep this in line with other companies also, your competitors, how they are remunerating directors in the same level or senior managers in the same level as your company. So according to them also, you have to position this remuneration package and how the labor market condition works. What are the remuneration package? Be aware of what comparable companies are paying. That is the repetition of the previous point. Okay. And also the relative performance you have to see. Be sensitive to the wider scene when you're taking uh, talking uh, about remuneration, director remuneration. Think wide, not just your company, your director, his expertise. No, think from the wider point. Okay, if it was elsewhere, if the same employee was working somewhere else outside your company, what would his what would be his pay? Especially when you have to determine the annual salary increases, you just cannot just decide okay this will be the annual no you have to see in line whether it's in line with other companies in line with labor market conditions also in line with the performance that you are getting so the, these are the certain things that needs to be taken care of the remuneration committee now go to the strategy what is the strategy these are some strategies that directors remuneration can do sorry the remuneration committee can do see when you are having low ba basic salary what is the strategy that they can apply? This, this is, uh, this I would say, it's a smart strategy that anyone can use. Okay, when your basic salary is low, sometimes your salary you cannot increase it, even if you want to attract, retain, or motivate. Based on your expertise, the level you are, your salary has to be low. Initially, when you join, your salary will be low. Later on, it increases. So when your basic salary is low, offer more benefits in kind like company car, or a loan to the employee, or a house, or whatever it is, whatever benefits in kind. Or a fuel or a car company or whatever it is so increase your benefits in kind more so that it compensates for the lower basic salary so that employees dis do not leave uh, soon by getting demotivated by low basic salary so offer them more benefits in kind understood second non-cash motivators for all or some of the company employees not all employees are motivated by cash by the way especially when you're the higher level the higher you are you are no longer motivated by cash make sure you give them other kind of motivation other kind of pay like child care voucher company car scheme additional holidays availability of company resources sometimes sometimes a company might be giving, get uh, going in losses so they might have insufficient cash that time to pay as an annual bonuses what can you do Make sure other resources are op open for them. For example, you might give them share options as an alternative or any other company resources. 
encouraging long term loyalty through share purchase scheme you tell them to purchase shares from your company's employees so that they stay loyal to you okay now there is a critical need to ensure the board is what is it the board is motivated to strive to increase performance see the more at the end board has to be motivated so that performance is increased okay if they are not there is no use of all the strategy having good remuneration sometimes your remuneration policy is excellent but if they are not motivated the board the performance is going to suffer so you have to keep increasing until the board is motivated okay educatedly rewarded when performance improvements are achieved you will be rewarded automatically when performance is improved third you have to be seen to be paid appropriate for the effort see if someone is making an effort make sure the board is actually paying them appropriately for their effort that they are giving not criticized for excessive pay the board should not be criticized for excessive pay that's why we are going through all this remission committee and we are having this corporate governance go the director's remuneration report why so that at the end excessive pay is not done retain through market based pay levels okay sometimes you can retain them through the market based pay levels that's how in every market the payment is now what are the components of this director's remission package basic salary number one number two performance related now you give them more based on the performance that they are making third bone so this are some performance related bonus share options and then we have pension the third element fourth pen is benefits in kind so this are the four components okay now let us go one by one through the four components first basic salary when you are setting the salary it should be according to what the job what is your job second what is the, your skill in that job third what is the performance in their job fourth what is your overall contribution to the company strategy fifth what is the market rate if similar job is done in some other company so this are five things that you need to take care of when you are setting the salary level now let us go to the performance related elements the second type of component in your remuneration remember even more than your salary or your other stuff your performance related element should form a significant part of the total remuneration packet significant means when you take it in terms of percentage performance related element in that remuneration component has to be more than your basic salary in the total remuneration package remember this okay because this is a good package if your salary is more than your performance related, it's not a good package because salary is high performance is not improving so it's not worth of paying more okay bonuses could be short term it could be long term so a short term bonuses may be paid to the director at the end of the accounting year okay and this could be done based on number of accounting measures next executive stock options okay when you're talking in terms of long term performance related elements see bonuses are usually short term long term when you're taking performance related element is the stock option executive stock options this is very common form okay so what are the share options it's like a basically like a contract that gives the executive okay that they can buy share at a fixed price okay at a future date okay so if the stock price rises what happens executive can benefit by selling the shares at a profit because they'll be owning the stocks now they are going to buy it when the price so when the price rises they can simply sell it and earn a profit it's their benefit executive can get it's a long term because it will be done in the future not not within 12 months maybe up to 4 years 5 years okay next share options okay having share options gives incentives okay incentives for what incentives the managers to increase the share price now shareholders wants the share price to increase because it's good for them manager also will want the share price to increase because they are going to get share options they can sell their shares if share price rises and get the benefit so you see both the managers ob uh, objective and the company's objective is in uh, is aligning now both wants the share price to increase it's beneficial for both if the share price increases so that one the manager also will work 
to increase the share price and it's good for the company also okay now what is this alignment we earlier in my earlier lecture we went through this something like this it is known as agency theory exactly agency theory we are having agency problems and all why manager is having some other the agent the manager is having some other goal okay the shareholder is having some other goal the principal okay goals are not aligning with each other that's why agency problem but when you are aligning them your agency problem is solved okay so the actual shares of the share option incentive should be approved by shareholders okay even if directors remuneration, remuneration committee is there share option when you are giving it has to be approved by the shareholder second it should replace any existing schemes that you have or at least form part of a well considered overall plan incorporating existing scheme sometimes it might have part of the existing scheme and later you are updating it into a new version sometimes you are just replacing it completely the existing schemes okay all those things is not so much required what you have to know is it has to be approved by the shareholder rewarding but should not be excessive share option also when you are giving it yes rewarding but it should not be too excessive also now payouts the grant option should be what it should be subject to challenging performance okay when you are giving options make sure that they are getting it for for a challenging performance criteria not something that they can easily achieve no something which is very difficult also but challenging that they can get across it okay and when you are setting it it has to reflect the company's objectives and performance also okay phased rather than awarded in one large block now this is very important when you are giving grant of options okay payouts give in in phases in different stages give in installments not in one go not everything together basis for short term bonuses what are the basis for short term bonuses how do you decide short term bonuses now this basis are very important otherwise you will fail to give a good effective bonuses number 1 bonuses could be based on your operating profit or pre tax profit okay for example percentage of bonus based on based on salary in relation to the percentage yearly profit increase okay second for example 2% salary 2% of salary for each 1% increase in profit if your profit increases salary also will increase Salary increase means as a bonus, okay? So two percent of salary you are taking as a bonus for one percent increase in profit, or fixed sum for achieving a given profit target. It's a fixed that if this profit is level, this bonus is fixed only. It's not increasing like how in the, how it was in the first one. That for this percentage increase, this much is your bonus. No, fixed. EPS earnings per share. Your bonuses could be based on EPS also. Okay, when you are taking EPS. it excludes exceptional charges that affect earnings okay third total shareholder return when you are taking total shareholder return into account make sure both your dividend and capital appreciation it includes both your dividend has to improve your capital appreciation has to improve over time then the fourth is economic value added eva what is eva it is the surplus calculated okay when you are charging for all the assets this is the surplus above that charge for all the assets using vac weighted average cost of capital okay as a threshold percentage minimum return before a bonus is achieved okay you have to achieve above this vac vac is a cost of capital you have to achieve above that okay so there should be some threshold minimum threshold has to be there that you have to achieve before you get any bonus okay now come into the third category that is pension contribution so we finished two things one is basic salary the first uh, second one second element was performance related there we went through long term short term now the third element is pension contribution
in general okay only basic salary should be pensionable you cannot pension your uh, performance related uh, part or your benefits in kind company cars no only basic salary the first element you can pension give it as a pension second remuneration company have to take care of the consequences also of the pension okay and also what would be the cost to the company if the basic salary increase because salary increase means your pension also will increase so what are the costs remuneration committee should take care of it okay benefits in kind is the fourth one okay also sometimes you must have heard this term perks okay so benefits in kind is referred to as perks these are non wage compensation okay basically it's it's non cash okay company car holiday those things so the remuneration company should provide whatever other benefits would either were expected with the position of executive director or will increase their loyalty sometimes it goes with their position right you have to give the benefit because the position demands so it requires you can chairman ceo you need a company car house sometimes it is there this benefits in kind you give to increase their loyalty or more, to keep them motivated example by giving them health insurance company car child care benefit so this things there could be anything but at the end it is part of remuneration now one example this is from the tesco okay let's see how um, okay you don't have to memorize this figure it's just an example that's it don't memorize this at all it's not going to come for your exam this is how tesco has calculated the four elements and what is their purpose and how they have calculated so number one is basic salary we went through this whatever we have studied the four elements we are going to do an example a live demo here basic salary to attract and retain talented people purpose is that you calculate how based on their responsibility skills and experience and benchmark when you are giving basic salary make sure that it is benchmark benchmarked against other large FTSE 100 companies okay FTSE 100 retailers and international equivalents this is about tesco company okay sorry i didn't mention the name of the company on the screen i think i just missed out on that but it's a tesco company's example that's why you have to benchmark against a similar company tesco is into what retailing so that's why you retail a uh, benchmark against FTSE 100 retailers okay so this is their basic salary including benefits okay 1563 you don't need to know how they have calculated just understand the range understand the range this is 1563 going to the next one is cash bonus cash bonus is short term remember and share option is a long term so cash bonuses it motivates purposes it motivates year on year earnings growth and deliver a strategy so year on year if you're having this earnings growth you are going to get a cash bonus okay and calculation is you can calculate it on specific objective or eps earnings per share again development of international and non-food businesses so you might get bonuses if you develop some international or non-food businesses because it's tesco company we all know tesco is into what so 2300 now compare this with the salary 1563 whereas cash bonuses is 2300 is more than your basic salary as we have discussed earlier that your performance related pay has to be more than your basic salary going to the one deferred share bonus okay this is deferred you're going to get it in the future that's why it's deferred share bonus this is the long term so what is the purpose to generate medium to long term goals okay and it is based on total shareholder return 1690 this is less than your cash bonus okay performance share plans and share options this is deferred share bonus deferred share bonus means it's a bonus as a bonus you are giving their shares later on this is share option plans share option and deferred share bonus is two different things please don't confuse the two things that's why it's given in different in this thing okay here purpose is long term uh, to get long term success by getting shareholder return and how are you going to calculate this based on mix of roce ebit and eps earnings per share earnings per interest and tax return on capital employed 
okay 1205 is very less if you see compared to the others so the total is 5472000 okay now you, did you see the overall this thing okay now other forms of compensation so these are other forms of compensation other than those four that we have discussed these are additional guaranteed bonuses and golden halos what is the meaning of it what is the meaning of this golden halos see the purpose of a bonus is to adjust pay on the basis of performance okay to award a bonus regardless of any particular effort is to make the term meaningless if you are giving bonus if no particular effort is there it's bo- it's useless okay so bonus also you have to adjust if your performance is not going maybe first year you have been performing well you have been giving bonus second year you might not be performing so well so your bonus also will uh, be reduced based on the performance okay in in this to be adjust you cannot say okay i have a, i have started giving bonuses in the first year let's say 10000 pounds next year also i have to give 10000 or more than that because i have given first year it's a residual now no adjust and this type of uh, compensations are not very common guaranteed bonus and golden halos okay but they are sometimes used to retain the ceos especially in struggling organizations okay for example and same uh, say uh, the guaranteed bonuses and golden halos they, they are similar almost okay so for example david lewis okay who, who is david lewis the ceo of tesco he was paid 3.2 million pounds as a golden halo okay hello means what you are welcoming them golden halo it's like a what do i see the hello comes but it is very expensive you can see it's a very expensive hello <laughs> Uh, that's the other way of taking it golden hello comes with a big thing right it's not a normal hello that is hello hi so you're welcoming them but it's a golden hello so for example the ceo of tesco was paid 3.2 million pounds as a golden hello by a way of compensation for bonuses because they are not receiving any bonuses it has been forf- uh, forfeited okay from his previous employer that that is unilever he is getting a golden hello as a compensation why do you do this it's a cost is a huge cost but you want to retain in that ceo especially if a ceo is good and uh, the organization is struggling you want in that time that is the time you want those ceos very badly to retain them in the struggling organizations so you pay them the golden halo okay other forms of okay there are other thing others other than golden halo these are other forms of compensation loyalty bonuses and retention payment from the word you know understood these are payment to retain them so that they are loyal from the word is understood but let's go through some example real life example okay how guaranteed bonuses are there even the loyalty bonuses are similar to retain the senior executives in may 2011 the city group awarded its chief executive the vikram pandit a 16.7 million us dollar retention bonus 16.7 million conversion of pound is also given so huge amount however still this loyalty bonuses they come under criticism because they, for due to some reasons what is it the current preference in west is what to rotate the directors they don't keep the same director and give them all those huge pay, payments and all their idea is ideology is change the director rotate so that they there are there is a freshness in the board they are independent rather than emphasis on loyalty they are saying rather than keeping them for a long term to ensure to make that they are loyal to retain them keep changing so that the board is fresh the board is independent that's the west's ideology okay corporate governance code recommends linking bonus with performance you have to link bonus with the performance okay and if you see this golden hello this retention they are not linked with the bonus performance at all you are paying just simply to retain okay so that's why they are crit- they are criticized even uh, if you see a continuous the corporate governance code they say link bonus with performance here the bonus are not linked with performance so they are criticized okay why because if you see in the real life do you think that even after you are paying huge amount of bonuses the loyalty bonuses or the golden halos they will stay 
What do you think? Do they stay? Not all. They do leave. Even after receiving that loyalty bonus, what if they leave? Who can stop them from leaving? No one. One such example is in the Easy Jet, the boss Andrew Harrison. After getting 1.2 million pounds of retention bonus in 2009, he left in 2010. So now you know what is the actual scenario. Right? Things which are easy in theory for you, practical world, they are not. Next, loans. Loan is the third form of compensation. Okay, but according to corporate governance, there are many countries where they say it's not pro it's prohibited. You cannot, the law is not giving them the permission to give loans to the directors. According to the US Serbans Oxley Act, you cannot give loans to the directors, it's prohibited. Okay, this form of compensation. But if you want to make a loan, justification is there. You can make a loan, but very little uh, justification is there. Not supporters are not so much of this type of compensation because they believe they can get loans from other commercial lending sources also okay fourth is deferred payments and transaction bonus in a down market no one wants to be the top of the tree for the bonuses remember in the down market when the market is suffering in a recession no one wants to give bonuses no one wants to be that top person who gives the highest bonus no one so that time you can use stock options for the future as an alternative those lean times as a welcome alternative use stock options rather than going for the bonus so that when the market recovers you benefit now, transaction bonuses may be given for successful conclusion to a business deal, such as a takeover. Sometimes you say that if this transaction, you crack this transaction or you crack this deal, you create this takeover, you are going to get a bonus. So, transaction bonus is like that, based on the transaction. Retirement benefit, the fifth type of compensation. All awards, okay, ultimately it is decided by the shareholder only. Remuneration committee can set up excellent remuneration package, but the shareholders have to approve it. Once they approve it, it is ultimately given by the shareholder only. Okay. So, a retirement benefit could be the lifetime use of the company plane or a sizable pension payout could be awarded. Okay. Termination. You might be giving awards made on the termination of the contract. Okay. Simply for the services rendered over a number of years. So you can build protection into that contract. When you're employing them, that time you can build that contract into the product. How? So that you limit the likelihood of forced termination. That means that you don't force them to terminate. You cannot force them to terminate. So you make sure that in the contract you build that protection in the time of employment. Okay. So having this is one way of reducing the possibility of being asked to leave. That, in that way you cannot ask them to leave. Just like that any time you have to give them notice or not. Otherwise, you have to give them the termination benefit, payment. Okay. For whatever they have been, for how many years they have been giving services, you have to give them the termination payment. Now, let us go to an example. Okay. Mrs. Smith is an executive director of company XCX. Okay. And basic salary is 100,000. He receives a company car also. He is reimbursed for all his travel expenses. Okay. And share price rises above 5 if he is entitled. Uh, if the share price rises above uh, $5, five, is entitled to 10,000 share options at a price of $1 each. Okay. Bonus also he receives 20% of the salary. If the company's profit before tax is above 2.5 million. His wife is also receiving a company car and is paid for by the company. He has permanent health insurance and also death in service benefit. So all of this is contained within his service contract. Okay, what elements in the above paragraph constitute the director's remuneration? Now from this paragraph above, you have to say which part of this is forms director's remuneration. Not everything will be director's remuneration. But in this case, all of it's apart from the expense reimbursement. If you went through the director's remuneration in the previous slide, you know everything is why. Basic salary is there. It comes under director's remuneration. Then the share price is there, 
then the bonuses is there then the permanent health insurance and death in service because they are benefits in fine so all the four are there basic salary performance this thing bonuses and benefits in kind all form part of the regular remuneration except the expenses that he uh, that is reimbursed for his travel expenses his travel expenses is not because nowhere in the regular remuneration we we saw that uh, getting reimbursement for the expenses comes under regular remuneration no okay now what does uk corporate governance code 2010 says regarding regular remuneration this is mostly this is a common thing which is highly there written in uk corporate governance code that means now you can understand how important is director's remuneration in in uk corporate governance code that's why it's been repeated many times why is it so significant because this is an area remember this is an area where excess needs to be reined in you have to let it stop you have to prevent excess being paid this is an area where excess is being paid and most of the scandals is mostly due to this area if you see the high corporate scandals it is because excessive data remuneration has been paid okay and later the company just collapsed because they have been just cashing in the remuneration the directors and then they just left the company second it is easy too easy to be excessive very easy in data remuneration very easily you can be excessive excess is viewed very deeply by everyone except those benefiting from the excess see excess is not good okay it is seen something as a negative only for those who are getting the actual benefit for them it's so nothing right they, obviously they'll be happy because they're getting their benefit but majority the ones who are not getting the benefit it's not seen deeply means it's not seen in a good light they are giving guidance uk corporate governance came forward and they are giving guidance on this performance related way what are they saying when you are giving bonuses make sure committee is considering eligibility and upper limits to the bonus when you are giving bonus keep an upper limit that beyond this bonus cannot go and it has to be eligible also you have to be eligible for the bonus share option schemes uh, incentives you have to take care of it you have to make sure you are eligible for the share option scheme as well how you are eligible for bonus you have to be eligible for share option scheme also long term if you are having any scheme has to be approved by shareholders and it has to, and if it has to it should replace any existing schemes wherever it is possible if you are making any payouts under all schemes it must relate to the performance criteria any scheme share option scheme bonuses you cannot just give it uh, independently without having performance there somewhere performance is improved then only give bonuses or share option scheme otherwise no payouts under share option scheme must be should be faced where possible you have when you are giving payouts under share option scheme don't give in one large block you are giving it in installments in phases different stages okay in general only basic salary should be pensionable this we went through this is just a uh, summary of what we went through that is what uk corporate governance code is also saying committee must carefully consider pension cost and obligations now some of the issues that arise from this there are some issues what are the issues the importance of performance related pay how important the performance related pay is it's an issue that you have to take care of it performance related pay is very important look into this okay because there's issues can arise in this five areas one is importance of performance related pay next conflict of interest that may arise in cross determination of pay between directors sometimes he might be an executive director in one board he might be non executive director in another board so he is only paying himself you see cross determination that should not happen because conflict of interest variety of pay impact of share option scheme there there's a variety of pay because very confusing to even actually monitor and also what is the impact on share option schemes so these are the three issues now directors remuneration we are going to other issues this are the other issues legal whether it's legal we are going to go in detail by the way but just for now no it could be an ethical issue it could be a competitive issue it could be a regulatory issue so these are the four issues that we are going to touch upon let's start with the legal issue 
a company with the guidance of remuneration committee okay should carefully consider what compensation commitments okay for example what is their pension and also other elements okay because this can have legal issue later on if you are not planning these things beforehand and also their directors terms of uh, appointment if in case of there is an early termination how directors are directors needs to be protected right so because this will have a legal issue so you have to sit with the remuneration committee with their guidance company should do this plan these issues next aim to avoid rewarding poor performance okay if a performance is poor avoid paying ethical issue there is a traditional view that ethics and business are two separate things but if you see the companies now they are showing a great sensitivity to ethical issues with the commercial success okay so that's why now they will see whether directors are paid fairly or not they are remunerated fairly or not or are they paying too less okay for example the 2006 the company had in uk okay according to that they made it a legal requirement it's a legal requirement that directors have to add as a good corporate citizen that means they have to add ethically not even your choice legal requirement okay and also there are some there, there's a reputation right reputation losses there so if directors have seen that they are receiving excessive remuneration it's not good for your public image it will suffer right so being ethical is a safe side also public perceptions of excessive pay rises in underperforming companies and privatized utilities okay when directors are paid excessively it is normally viewed that the company is underperforming and it's a privatized utilities okay it's a, it's, a, it's a negative perception now there has been some recent changes to the best pra uh, disclosure requirements okay on board structure what should be the board structure and also the executive pay so because of this change disclosure practice now it's putting a pressure on the board that they have to change their board uh, the board policies to be in line with the accepted best practice so you have to be ethical it's not your choice any longer okay now there are some recent developments that has led the leading companies to incorporate ethics into their business okay regarding their directors employee contract and performance related pay schemes when you are paying it has to be fair according to the ethics ethically it is wrong if you are paying them less or more competitive issues the third issue okay so when you are paying remuneration make sure it's competitive okay it has to be in line with other companies okay and also a balance must be struck with regards to overall remuneration package overall there should be a balance okay everything whether your salary is being competitive or your performance related is competitive these things needs to be taken okay balance has to be there if it is too small what happens and if it is too big what happens if it is too small unattractive new appointees will not want to join and also you will fail to rec recruit the required caliber of individual and also it's demotivating okay existing directors for existing directors also is demotivating it's too small if it's too big on the other hand too easily earned shareholders are not getting any value for money in terms of performance okay Coming to the regulatory issue, the fourth issue, the decade director's remuneration report regulation 2002 requires this few things. What is it? Number one, directors have to submit a remuneration report to members. All the directors, what is their remuneration? They have to have this remuneration report and have to submit at AGM every year. The report must provide full de de uh, details of director's remuneration okay report has to be clear understandable and transparent because these are regulatory needs okay otherwise you have to pay fine and uh, legal sanctions and all those things will be there where a company releases an executive director to serve as an nad elsewhere this is where we are talking about cross dictatorship remember 
we talked about cross dictation when issue so company releases an executive director and he is being an nad elsewhere remuneration report should include a statement what is it as to whether or not the director will retain such earnings or not if so what the remuneration is now regarding U uk servants oxley act okay this has been very strict okay under uk servants oxley act 2002 regarding remuneration packages they are very strict okay because most of the high corporate scandals is related to this one particular area of course there are other areas but this one is the biggest area major area that's why we are talking so much about data remuneration data remuneration data remuneration so this reflects what additional demand on directors now directors have additional demands okay additional responsibility your responsibility increases now your demand increases your responsibility increases and also the ability of those individuals who agree to serve on the board of directors sorry the potential liability of those individuals who agree to serve on the board of directors it's a liability you're liable now things go wrong you have to pay even if you make someone else work on behalf of you it is the directors who are liable if things go wrong that responsibility you cannot give to someone else heightened external scrutiny right externally now you will be you need to be reviewed you need to you need to be verified okay external checks will be there now because of this high corporate scandals and all coming to the non executive directors remuneration all this while directors remuneration when we were talking about was from executive directors remuneration point of view now we are moving to the non executive directors remuneration who pays them what should be their pay this is a very small uh, topic by the way okay i think it's one or two slides so to avoid the situation where the remuneration committee okay remuneration committee is what only non executive data independent non executive data 100% okay so they are only responsible for determining the remuneration of nad so, uh, sorry they should not be responsible for the remuneration of themselves because they are non executive director sitting on the board so they cannot uh, pay themselves they cannot decide the remuneration for themselves someone else has to decide their remuneration non executive director decides the remuneration for executive director who decides the direct, uh, remuneration for non executive director there should be someone else right so the uk corporate governance code 2016 says the board and the shareholder they decide the nad's remuneration obviously there are some limits according to the company's constitution that is that's all uh, fine but it is the shareholder who decides or the board who decides the non executive directors remuneration remember this it's not the remuneration committee remuneration committee only for the executive director they will decide the remuneration i am repeating this point because a lot of students make mistakes in this area it's very small but mistake is too big okay non executive directors remuneration what does their remuneration consist of basic salary and non executive directors may receive share awards they might receive some share awards but it's not very common but they have their basic salary they don't have all those benefits in kind performance related pay is not there for non executive director it is only for executive director so please understand the difference between these two next equity based remuneration to non executive director should be fully vested on the grant date the day you granted has to be fully vested that means you have to be there you have to exercise you have to be if they say that you have to be a non executive director for 4 years 3 years you have to give the service for 3 years then you can get the equity based remuneration you have to complete that you cannot leave in between okay but still subject to applicable holding dates you have to hold for that long now performance measures remuneration was advocated in executive remission packages is not generally supported as i told you performance measures are there for executive not for non executive okay why why according to icg and what is icg in international corporate governance network according to that okay they say that if you give performance based remuneration to the non executive director it is going to be a self interest for them they are going to be in a conflict of interest why what is their primary role of non executive director is to be the representative of shareholder independent represent they are there for shareholders okay 
so if they are also performance they are also getting bonuses based on performance based uh, remuneration they are also going to get remunerated based on their performance will they not have a self interest will they not want their bonuses to increase so they will want to they, so they basically they are also getting involved in the company's operation so there is no difference between executive and non executive director any longer they are there to look after the executive director not to uh, enhance the performance or so that's why they say they are against performance based remuneration for non executive director and now finally let's summarize everything together i know this is a very big lecture okay when you go through this lecture it would be tiring also maybe to go all at once so i recommend going stages phases by phases you will understand is understood okay there are several topics i think 14 topics this lecture has been divided into so which i introduced in the starting only of the video that list is given right the things to focus go through that list you will get it now let us summarize all those 14 areas that we have covered in this lecture number 1 unit to structure we started with unit to structure there are two structures unit to and two tier structure unit to structure is very simple one board of director okay all are accountable to shareholders second which companies are more prone to this unit to structure us and uk we are currently studying unit to structure only non executive director executive director on the same board whereas two tier structure is where there are two boards one is supervisor one is management board and it is found in country like france germany finland and netherlands we will not come across two tier structure in this syllabus because we are studying the uk syllabus okay so in the unit structure third meetings okay agenda balances long and short term issues when you are going through a meeting make sure both issues are covered long term and short term supportive information is there regular and attendance are expected chairman direct proceedings characteristics and composition okay what are their characteristics of the board how the board has to be composed what is the balance of executive and non executive director on the board and it should not be dominated by a single powerful individual that means separation of chairman and ceo and their role is different it should be done by different people their role is different then we went through roles and responsibilities of the board what is the role and responsibilities the primary responsibility is to act in the good faith of the interest in the company not their own interest the board is not there for their own interest is for the company and to do that they have to display a certain amount of skill and reasonable care they should have some skill okay ensure company maintains full and accurate accounting records that is their responsibility that falls under their responsibility there are more in fact but this is just a summary so these are some main roles and responsibilities produce present file proper annual accounts and directors report obey other laws cpd continue professional development companies need the resources okay they to develop company has to provide this resources to the directors so that they can develop their knowledge and skills even for the non executive director they have to give it then come into the induction program okay for all incoming director okay in the induction program what is the purpose so that they become familiar with the company they understand the nature of the company what is their business in which market are they operating they get through with the people there's a link with the company's people they understand the company's main relationships for example who are their main auditors their main supplier their main customer things like that performance evaluation how do you evaluate the performance once a year at least once a year okay should not take more than a year once a year has to be done the more frequently it is done the better it is okay frequent evaluations is always good but if it cannot be done then once a year has that's compulsory and when you are taking the performance of the board as a whole how they are performing you have to evaluate also there are four committees what are the four committees risk remuneration audit nomination we went through two committees in this one is nomination one is remuneration audit committee when we go through audit we are going to go through that later on and risk committee we are going to go through when we are going to go through risk committee risk this topic right risk risk management then we are going to go through the other two committees okay ninth legal and regulatory framework how they appointed and retirement there there everything is there's a law how they are going to get appointed how they are going to get retired what are the service contract how they are going to get removed how their disqualification how conflict of interest insider dealing is not accepted chairman 
chairman is the one who runs the board he ensures that the board sets and implements the company's direction and strategy he he's the one who sees the vision he is not the one who runs who is going to implement this he makes sure the board implements this strategy understanding he is the lead company's lead ceo on the other hand he is managing he is taking the responsibility to execute the strategy that is set by the chairman he is following the strategy from the chairman and run, make sure it's, it's he's running it okay reports to the chairman or the board of directors you see ceo is under the chairman so ceo has to report to the chairman or the board of directors executive director and non executive director executive director is one who are senior managers of the company they are in the operation of the company they run they are in the members of the board they are 10 agm okay they are usually paid or remunerated they are paid as a full time employees for their work okay they are in the organization 24/7 whereas any days okay they do not form part of the executive management team they are not in the operation of the company they are part of supervising and they might not even get full time payment or remunerated how executive directors are okay they will they might have their own fee for the time that they have devo uh, devoted to the company because they are not uh, they are not full time employees of the company independence independence is very important when non executive directors comes with that independence comes independence means you are detached from the company certain detachment is required okay and you should be independent in judgment and have an inquiring mind judgment means when you are making a judgment you should it should not be too biased it should not be a personal opinion it should uh, you should be independent and also inquiring mind you should always have this challenging mind you cannot accept everything on the face or everything that is given to you. you don't accept all the facts given to you you need to question you need to challenge it to make sure that you are independent okay so that's it for this lecture it's a pretty big lecture i think it's more than 3 hours but uh, the topic is such that everything is important and i cannot say this part or that part is uh, important but anyway thanks for watching and see you in the next video